Oh. Well, hello again, everybody. This is Harry Carey. Wait a minute. Wait, falls back, but anyway. See, I'm already, I'm already out of it. With flavor malt beers. Anyway, uh, yesterday I, I discovered a new Four Loco product. Uh, introduced directly to compete against the Johnny Bootlegger in the uh, flavor malt beverage non-carbonated subcategory. So what the world needs is another FMB, I know, but anyway. And I checked on YouTube, I checked online. This will be the first review of this in the world. Copyright 2012, Ronald Terrio. So uh, <laughs> that's his line there. But anyway, 13.9% uh, ABV on this one. So they have, they've, they've, they've uh, taken, taken on Johnny Bootlegger, which is 12%. So that's almost a 2% bump in ABV, which should get the college frats excited. And uh, same uh, same con configuration, a 6.8 ounce bottle, where with the bootlegger, you get a actual glass bottle. With this one, you get the PET plastic, which is like the in whiskey, the traveler's bottles. So you can yeah. carry even more of these along with you. They fit very well in the suitcase or in your pocket or whatever, so they went with the plastic on this. So now I'd like to introduce the uh, the esteemed Alco Pop panel assembled today on a Sunday afternoon and uh, start uh, top row to my right from the state of Georgia. Uh, John Neely has his own very successful channel, Georgia Beer Reviews. He's all, he, he loves craft beer, stouts, but he'll also, he won't he won't shy away from drinking an FB name, FMB now and then. So what do you have today, John? All right. Well, yeah, thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to this. This is the, I wanted to get something similar to what you have. I haven't seen the non-carbonated, you know, the, the version that you have, but this is the same flavor. Uh, it's the Blue Raz Sour, 23.5 ounce can, 14% uh, alcohol. And I think I've tried this one before. Um, anyway, they do say on the label, five ounce serving size. So I got my little five ounce serving glass here to pour it in. Yes, the goblet. And uh, I guess I'll just go ahead and crack it open and pour it up. Okay. And now uh, next, needs no introduction, but... I'll go through the formality anyway. From the great state of Louisiana with some of the most liberal beer laws in the country, which I'm very jealous of. Ronald J. Terrio. Ron, what do you have this afternoon? Yes, hello. I have to go get it out the freezer because y'all know I went to the store and got it uh, about, what, about three hours ago, two hours ago? Yeah. Just but give us a little there, description and you it's can called, grab it out of the bullpen. Yeah, it's called uh, the original Club Tales. Um, they're like canned cocktails, but it's beer based. It's flavored ale, natural flavor, artificial color, 10%. All their beers across the line are 10%. I don't know how long they've been on the market. They showed up here about a year ago and then they started spreading now into Georgia very recently. Um, comes from Canada, Geloso beverage. Um, stra strawberry daiquiri is a new one replacing strawberry colada. They even kept same some of the same copy. They just they just adjusted the uh, write up on it. Uh, so I guess it's a slightly altered recipe because the other one was talking about, or the new one was talking about how to try to make it have a little bit of a rum flavor or something. So anyway, that's what I've got. Uh, Sixteen mm -hmm. ounces. The price here runs about a dollar fifty a can if you find a good deal. Or a dollar seventy-five if you're finding a bad deal. So between a dollar fifty, dollar seventy-five. Uh, and back in 2015, they re they uh, reconfigured the recipe for the club tails. They made them slightly less sweet, and they, they lowered the carbonation a little bit too. So I think they're trying to maybe appeal to a little bit wider potential drinking audience, just maybe more than just a college frat crowd. And I've had the club tails on several occasions, and they do. I hate the word to use premium in this category. 
but they do have a little bit more of a premium feel and flavor, I think. So, uh, now, again, 10%, very quaffable. I mean, you can drink a lot of this, but uh, now when you first, a good choice. When you had Club Tales, did you have them under the original? I don't think. No, no, I never tried it. I was, I would, uh, FMBs were off my radar back then. <laughs> so, but, uh, but the one I had, I've had the, uh, the screwdriver and the, the Bahama Mama. And they're uh, readily available in this area. They must be quite popular. Uh, and they have five or six different flavors of them. And they're prominently, they run here between 159 to 169 per can. For the and, you haven't, and you haven't seen the uh, mango, mango, margarita, mango. I think I've seen that one too at Sheets, I believe. Like I say, they're pretty well distributed here. And they have a good variety of them. I don't so, go get uh, mine. From the great state of Kansas, who produced one of the best American progressive rock bands in history, Kansas, carry on Wayward Son, Robert Hendricks. What we got today is the Four Loco Frost. Now, this was a incidental purchase that just happened to fit with your with your uh, channel here because I thought Frost meant maybe it was like an ice beer like what we was going to have for Multi Monday, but I wasn't sure. I didn't know anything about it. This is only the second can of Four Loco I've ever had. The first one was a green color. I think it was probably Sour Apple, but I can't remember. Honestly. It's been too long ago. It's been a couple of years ago. Anyway, so this is a good time time to drink it at 660 calories per the can the way i understood it that's a lot of calories and of course we have certified colors fdnc yellow number five involved in this <laughs> with 14 percent abv and a serving size of five fluid ounces just like johnny boys yeah so, the good thing about the coloring in here robert it's it's certified color because if it Certainly, wasn't yeah, certified, I, I wouldn't want non-certified color in here. Absolutely so. not. I would toss it aside. It would be <laughs> drained for without being certified. You know, you're, you know, you're joking about that, but actually that you really wouldn't want non-certified coloring because uh, certified color means it's certified by the United States government as being safe for human consumption. Yeah, Man, Robert, right, yours yeah. is even bluer than mine, and mine's the uh, blue rat. Yeah, well, Deeper blue. It's like Windex. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> call Windex. We're Windex. <laughs> and maybe tastes like Windex. You know, who knows? If the no, uh, color that's falls definitely in. raspberry, that blue raspberry, like you get the blue raspberry uh, ices. That's exactly the first thing that hits my nose. Uh, and, uh, okay, wh while you're uh, giving the sniff here, I'll give a little bit of the Cliff Notes version. Did a, did a hangout back in... Uh, March. The first one I ever did where I explained the F and B's pretty good, but the basic process of these is they start with a beer and through their own technical wizardry, they remove all the color, flavor, aroma, any characteristic of a beer. What right. they want is a neutral alcohol base. And a malt base, our government is taxed at a less rate than spirits. So it makes sense for them to use the malt base. But once they have that neutral malt base, just provide the alcohol, then they can pile on the natural artificial flavors, the certified color, and everything like that. But they start with that neutral base. But these are beers for taxation purposes, and there's no other category they fit in. So just like the PBR hard coffee, it doesn't look, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't pass a, a lot of tests for a beer, but it is a beer. And these are beers because they have the malt beverage base, and the government doesn't get into specifics anything other than that. These are considered standard for the operating practice of this particular product so uh their beers like it or not but but that malt base is what they're after and if you're getting a beer taste in these they haven't done their job right what you should be tasting are those natural artificial flavors and but the alcohol just gives it that punch which the people who drink these like i mean it's all about the abv with these things so uh that's a, just a brief rundown on this. And in 2010, the government basically, the nanny state, shut these down because of the caffeine and other substances that they had. And they had to re, re they had to come up with a different, completely different recipe for these things. The caffeine was out, and the other stimulants were out. They were actually banned in some states, 
And there was a run on these products at that time for people who wanted to get the old version. Uh, so they were running the stores trying to stock up and hoard it like people did during the pandemic with toilet paper and various other things. So, but this is the only version I'm aware of myself. And uh, I don't know if, if that's any more, amp, get you really more amped up in these, I think. <laughs> this is this is plenty enough for me. So, uh, but I've got mine in the uh, bullpen and I'll grab, I'll grab my, grab mine, then we'll start the, the tastings. Proper with the tastings. Right. Premium malt beverage. Mm. Premium malt beverage. Mm. Um, mine uh, says the zesty, mine says the tangy flavor of strawberry with the finish of rum a rum finish it does have sort of a rum finish mm. now can i say something real fast sure uh, later on i want to talk about natural and artificial coloring but um Um, when you construct these flavored malt beverages or canned cocktails made with liquor even, they sort of using the same philosophy as a blended whiskey, which is the base of the whiskey is supposed to be really fla flavorless and odorless. And the flavor is supposed to come from the single malt or the straight bourbon that they're adding, that 20% top side. And I think that's the sim it's a similar kind of concept. I believe I'm on the right track. Um, if you read about how they construct, say like um, black velvet Canadian blended whiskey, they go through that description very similar to what you gave with flavored malt beverages. And in 2017, Four Local actually did come out with a line of hard shots, uh, 70 proof, 35 alcohol. They were uh, Dragon's Breath, uh, Green Tornado, and Screwball. I don't currently see this on their website, so they must have been a flop. And they, but they were actually spirits. I'm sure they used a uh, contracted for vodka, contracted company for vodka. So apparently, um, people associate Four Loco with something that can get you lit up, but also drinkable. So that probably this 10, 15 ABV range is probably a sweet spot for these products. And I think the fact that they. Uh, like I said, I, I couldn't find any evidence that they're still available. So uh, I think they probably settled into their their niche category with these. But uh, we got some uh, some good comments coming here. Commerce cheers. All, I do not do four loco. Well, you're a stronger man than me. Smarter. Also. Smart. <laughs> so we've got a, a nice... Uh, So I'll, I'll, pour, I'll, 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 show, I'll show mine again here. Uh, 6.8 ounce bottle, PET plastic. So we have three Windexes and one strawberry daiquiri, it looks like. <laughs> yeah. And I've got, for mine, I've got a shot glass, the proper shot. It's, it's, a, it's a shot on the bottle, so I thought it would be proper enough. And here's a very... Uh, now, then, this makes me want to open this. The first, from Kevin Johnston, the first time I puked from alcohol was from a Four Loco beer. So, nothing nothing like that it gives you a lot of assurance about drinking things. But anyway. Right. You probably, probably didn't drink the suggested serving size either, though. That's right. Besides <laughs> the uh, proper, so I have a little. Uh, yeah, this would be a bad one to go much beyond that with. It, it make it make that crown oil experience seem mild, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you just had to throw that in there, didn't you? <laughs> Woo! Yeah, I wouldn't well, I, drink. Well, I was I was just bringing in a reference point, you know. <laughs> I, I get it. <laughs> Trust me, I get it. <laughs> Thankfully, okay, I don't here's the. Uh, Oh, beautiful! Looks like uh, looks like temper. Is this one darker? 
Hold uh, yeah. hold yours up, Robert, and we'll see. Yeah, yours looks darker. It does have a more richer appearance. Yours must be using blue number one, and they're using blue number right. two. Right. I'm not making. I'm not making a joke there. That's yeah, actually. That's <laughs> okay, uh, I'll take. Y'all already sniffed yours. I'll take a quick, a quick. <laughs> Now, mine's technically certified colors in F, D, and C, yellow number five. Right. Well, they have to show even specify. Yeah, they don't always specify, but if it, they use, uh oh, he froze, but that happens with this thing in Steam Scream Yard. If they use um, F, D, and C, yellow number five, they always have to list it. I don't know why. Same thing with red number, red, the red coloring. Definitely do get some raspberry, raspberry on this. It comes up pretty. It's that's the dominant. It's not boozy on the nose. No. no. So, well, I hope Robert can rejoin us with his uh, product. Hotel but, uh, pool water. <laughs> we'll take a cheers to FMBs on a Sunday afternoon in August. <laughs> I bet that's the best thing you've ever tasted. That was weird. It just totally booted me off. I mean, so I can't hey, it, that's all the time. All the time. It's the four loco demons. There's nothing we can do about it. Just, just, <laughs> yeah, just ride a storm out. It'll be fine. Stream, uh, stream, yard, stream yard demons, more like. That was wild. That's never happened to me before. Oh, it's happened to me, and it, I've seen it happen to many other people many others hey that's no that's darker than scope wow looks like hotel pool water <laughs> it's pretty damn good actually yeah <laughs> it really is i would Nothing like about I would, losing that carbonation it just to me it's smoother i would have to try yours before i made that statement <laughs> okay Bill. Just a little burn on the finish, not getting any nostril action. So, uh, I mean, for I hate to preface by saying, but for what it is, I mean, obviously that's what it is. I think it's pretty good. Yeah, that raspberry, it's it's sweet, but it's not the cough syrupy, cloyingly sweet. And for thirteen point nine, I would never, I would never guess that for this. Yeah. Drink that After whole bottle. Bottles, I'm sure you would. But right now, I mean, it's <laughs> it's cold. It's <clears throat> but I, you know, the fact that it, it there's still a little, just a slight twinge of natural carbonation. I've belched a few of these in the past. So you get a little bit of belching, but I think it does. You know, it, it avoids that alco pop. The the pop rocks fizz mouthfeel. Dare I say <laughs> this is a little bit more adult. <laughs> I said that lightly. I say it very lightly, but uh, it's, it's a flavored malt beverage for the connoisseur of flavor. Right. <laughs> the uh, cognoscendi. <laughs> this is for the FMD snobs. Flavored malt beverage snobs will enjoy it. They don't. They don't mess around with this common stuff. What about what about yours? Uh, John. Well, <clears throat> hopefully when Robert gets back too, he'll be able to tell it. I've, I've seen the frost, but I've never had it, but it sounds like his is also like a blue raspberry type flavor. Yeah. Just, I think he'll I mean, be back. Like I say, it's um, the, so mine, the local mine probably, I mean, it's very blue raspberry oriented. It's got that like frozen, like popsicle blue raspberry flavor. Um, it smells very sweet. There's really, there's really not a lot of alcohol. It's fourteen percent, and it doesn't taste like fourteen percent. Yeah, but it's going to feel like it. 
Yeah, I mean that's why they the you know five ounce suggested serving size <laughs> is kind of funny. Um, they give you this big old can. It's like, but only drink five ounces of it. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna put this back in the fridge and save it for later. Yeah, um, yeah, but to be fair, to be fair to, to the company, they probably intend for a group of four people to buy it, pour it into nice glasses, and share it as they play right. uh, part as they play Parcheesi or or Canasta. Right, four loco. Get four crazy people, split up a, a can, and between the four of them, and you got a you got a party. Play, um, play Canasta. Yeah. Uh, the carbonation is, is really not that high. Robert was holding his. If you see when I hold my glass up, there's really not a lot of bubbles. Uh, Robert's looked a lot more effervescent than mine initially. Yeah, still you can see his bubbles. Yeah, you can still see going up. Nothing really with mine. So the carbonation is more along the lines of maybe like country club malt liquor somewhere in there. A um, little lighter on the carbonation for that extra smooth finish. Right. Uh, um, <laughs> The alcohol, like I said, the alcohol's masked very well, and I'm not getting anything really other than that blue raspberry wow. That's artificial flavor note. Um, I guess when you swallow it down, like it is slightly warming, so you you may be able to tell that it's a higher alcohol product just from that, that burning sensation, but it is not boozy. Uh, I am drinking it very cold, and I'm probably gonna go put the rest of this back in the fridge because I don't think this is going to get better as it warms, but it is a good product for what they're shooting for. I mean, it's. I think they did exactly what they were trying to do with this thing. Uh oh. No. Shoot. What I just thought about mine is like a freezer pop. Yeah. Put in the freezer. That's exactly what this is like, and especially mine by not being carbonated. When you were talking about yours about the. It just popped in my mind. That's what it's. That's what it is. Is if you if you boozed up a freezer pop, and then let it, you freeze it, then you let it thaw back out. That's what you've got here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Perfect description. Freezy pop. Mine's like, you know, when you go to, we have a convenience stores where they got several icy flavors that you can take, and you can get the blue raspberry, the red mm -hmm. cherry, or the white cherry, and then the coke flavor. And you make, I make a three layer one. It's like the blue raspberry, but it has such a medicinal taste. Mine's very medicinal in the taste. It's, it's, if you mix this with blue NyQuil and you put about the normal serving of blue NyQuil and about that much of this, you would not notice much of a difference. And you would have the extra alcohol to help you sleep. <laughs> so, I mean, oh, no. That's as, as far as alcohol kick, not really. I have to admit that, but it's a very medicinal blue. It's the artificial medicinal blue raspberry note. That's what I get. So you're drinking NyQuil, in other words. Well, uh, don't have the menthol effect on it. My, we're we're missing the menthol. It's the new Mine NyQuil. is not medicinal. I, I'd like to compare the one I have to the one that you have, Robert. I might have to buy a can of the Frost and compare um, but yours is from the bold series, right? Or yeah, didn't it say, didn't it say bold. bold on the label somewhere? Yeah, it says bold series. Yeah, right bold. There. Okay, bold series. So mine is. So basically, it sounds like yours is just like an amped up version of the one that I'm drinking. It, it may be. And I'm like you. I'm not going to drink. Sit here. I'll drink this glass, and that's going to be it because this it's very sugary too. I. The sugar lingers on my lips. I can lick my lips, and I still get the sugary effect coming down. So it's very sweet with it. Very sweet. Now, mine, you want me to tell you about mines? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yes. we want to hear from the uh, – this might be the the elite of the group. Mines is – uh, four bespeckled white males gather together, gather together <laughs> to discuss flavored malt beverages on a Sunday afternoon. Um, this, first of all, the can design is like a 1992 necktie with that splash of color across it. I might order this from Rush Limbaugh, but I would have to go back in a time machine to 1992 and see what neckties Marta is designing. But, um, 
but that was then, this is now. It is kind of a throwback can design though. So y'all hear me all right? Yep. Yeah. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? All right. So it's very pink and certified colorish, much like an icy or a snowball or a freezy pop. It makes you fancy. <laughs> Not really, but um, it's it's insipid. Okay, it's an insipid product. Let's just admit what we're dealing with here. But it, like William said, it is what it is. Sugary sweet, and it is real sugar in this case. It's not corn syrup, corn sweetener. It's cane sugar. That's what uh, Club Tail says. We use only cane sugar, which makes a difference. If you don't believe me, go buy some Dr. Pepper with cane sugar and compare it to the high fructose corn syrup version. Be like two different uh, product. Well, it is two different products, but it'd be you 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 won't believe how much you've been ripped off your whole life. No, Same I thing agree. with Coke and the real Coke. The yeah. Mexican Coke, yeah. yeah the, get that high the version Mountain you get, uh, the ones that are made in Mexico use the cane sugar. It's yeah, a lot Mountain Dew does the same thing. Yeah, Mountain Dew yeah and even sometimes, got, even sometimes you can get a U.S. made ones that uses the sugar. Like you'll have Pepsi Throwback, they call it Pepsi Throwback, which uses cane sugar. And if you ever drink the ones with the cane sugar, you'll never be able to stomach the corn syrup ones again. They're so horrendously bad. All right. This one is very cane sugar sweet. Um, I don't know how somebody could possibly drink these on a regular basis. It's tart like a strawberry. There is a strange rum finish where that's coming from. I don't know. Maybe they're using rum extract for all I know. It could be possible. A very limited amount. The body's high, medium, nearly heavy. It's a semi-dry finish. Semi, it's like midway sweet to dry. It's like in the middle. Um, for what it is, it's it's excellent, most excellent for what it is. And I agree with William. The, the original Club Tales is one of the more premier flavored malt beverages, uh, or in the case of this one, it says flavored ale. And that's not just something they're putting on the can. It's not a lager. If it says flavored ale, it's an ale. Get your, get your Tax and Trade Bureau handbook out and start reading it. Um, you can't put... You can't just put anything on a label. Um, sure, sure you can. They put premium on here. <laughs> well, wait. Okay, yeah, that's not a that's not a legal term. That's that's a uh, what they call a marketing term, I think. So that that's allowed. Premium, uh, you know, like they could say. Well, premium is a very common term they'll use. Right. Uh, I think they call that a glittering generality, but that there are specific legal terms that you can't just throw around uh, willy nilly or Nolan's Volans. You can't use terms like ale if it's a lager or lager if it's an ale. You can't say bourbon if it's not a bourbon. And you don't want to get caught doing it. Uh, sometimes you'll see companies very quickly change their label, and it's because the uh, U.S. government came down on them. And, and really, I don't support these regulations. I'm not saying I do. But they're meant to prevent fraud because back in the 1890s, there was a whole lot of fraud going on when it came, when it turned beer, wine, and liquor, especially liquor. I also have a bottle of the Johnny Bootlegger, so I'll show it to compare the, uh, the two. Okay, so I'm just going to, I'm going to finish out, I'm going to finish out saying, uh, it's most excellent for what it is. Just don't like what it is. You know what I'm saying? I don't like what it is. I wouldn't drink it on a regular basis. Too sugary, too sweet. It would just it would make me cringe, you know? Now, William, when do you want me to uh, give that little description of the uh, natural flavors versus uh, artificial flavors? You can do that right now while I'm showing the two bars. Yeah, I've never seen Johnny Bootlegger. I've seen it, but we can't get it around here. Sad to say. Popular here. Uh, as a matter of fact, the uh, 
most of the gas stations, the Johnny Bootlegger is right next to the Four Loco. <laughs> the the uh, here is uh, Bootlegger gives you a, an actual glass bottle. Yeah, that's nice. Here's what I'm reading. Mm -hmm. This is from the uh, Code of Fed Federal Regulations, Title 21, Volume 2, Revised April 1st, No Fooling, April 1st, No Fooling, 2019. Title 21, Chapter 1, Subchapter B, Part 101, Subpart B, Section 101.22. <laughs> Foods, labeling of spices, flavors, colorings, and chemical preservatives. Uh, artificial flavor or artificial flavoring means any substance, the function of which is to impart flavor, which is not derived from a spice, fruit, or fruit juice, vegetable, or vegetable juice, edible yeast, herb, bark, bud, root, leaf, or similar plant material, meat, fish, poultry, eggs, dairy products, or fermentation products thereof. Now, skipping down to artificial flavor. Oh, that's artificial. Skipping down to natural flavor. Like we all drink, or well, I'm drinking natural flavor, and William... I'm sorry, uh, I know for sure Robert and John are drinking artificially flavored. Oh, yeah. Natural flavor means this, quote, the essential oil, oleoresin, essence or extractive, protein hydrosolate, hydrolysate, sorry, hydrolysate, distillate or any product of roasting, heating or enzymolysis, which... <laughs> Enzymolysis, which contains the flavoring constituents derived from a spice, fruit, or fruit juice, vegetable or vegetable juice, edible yeast, herb, bark, root, bud, leaf, or similar plant material, meat, seafood, poultry, eggs, dairy products, or fermentation products thereof, whose significant function in food is flavoring rather than nutritional. Natural flavors include the natural essence or extractives obtained from plants listed in 182.10 and part up to part 184 of this chapter and the substances listed in 172.510 of this chapter so uh if it's a natural flavor it actually is coming from nature as complicated as that sounds it's really not that complicated those long words a little bit hard to come out after you've had a few sips of fmb <laughs> it, yeah and some of those words are hard. yeah some of those words are hard on their own on their own merit yeah. So I continue to sip on this one. This is actually no sweeter than an 8%. I just had a Natty Rush, the Mountain Madness, a couple weeks ago. I found it for the first time out in the country. I thought I would try one of those. It's their Mountain Dew variant. This is really well, no sweeter than it. Mountain Dew, alcoholic Mountain Dew, that sounds pretty dang tasty. I'm with Don. I've got, <laughs> a can, I've got a can back here on my wall of beer, wall of drinks. Right? I would do that. But right. really, this, this for you know, for 14, almost like a tick under 14%. I mean, it's really very, very drink, very smooth and drinkable. Like I said, it's really no sweeter or no more cloying than some of those 8%, like your steel reserves or your other. This just gives you that alcohol punch, you know, underneath it, which, you know, sort of, they say alcohol. With this, you don't taste the alcohol. You, shake, you taste the effects of the alcohol. It's a conduit of flavor. It's like a channel, an agent of flavor. It just like moves things up a little bit. Like heroin. Well, it, it's <laughs> like. <laughs> if you want to use that term while we're. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but really, I mean, I, I, I like it. You know, I like, I like beers. I like quality beers. I like macro beers. But I also like this. So uh, if, if that makes me bad, I'm bad. No. I, you know, I enjoy products like this from time to time. Honestly, it's more fun to sit here and talk about the products than it actually is to drink them. But, you know, it's it's fun either way. I'm interested well, when Ron gets back to hear about the, the artificial, what constitutes an artificial flavoring. But but what to what you said, John, uh, once in a while is great, but really to understand it, you do have to drink it. And honestly, this is only <laughs> one I've ever had. And I, I'm not going to ever make a habit out of buying something like this. It's not me. It's not what I like. And maybe I'm more susceptible to the sweetness than William is. 
but it's just too sweet for me. Yeah. I mean, I love a great gin and tonic, and in the gin and tonic, I'll mix probably a half a teaspoon of agave syrup in there. But I like to keep it more on the slightly bitter side, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I, I just, but I like my bourbon. <laughs> here, so, you know, it, it's, it's, I don't know. Yeah. This one is just too but it, they're probably sweet. we do have different palates. We have different oh, eyesight. Yeah. People have different levels of hearing. There are some uh, men at the age of fifty. Many of them can't hear above thirteen thousand kilohertz. Probably me. <laughs> Myself, I'm a music lover, and I've got a CD which casts all the way through the audio range, twenty to twenty thousand hertz. And my hearing is still exceptional for my age. So we all we're all different. Our senses are different. Right. I, I'll admit I have a sweet tooth. So I'm probably maybe I should call in. We maybe we maybe should call the uh, EMT right now. I don't know. <laughs> it's not, Ron's all strung out over there. Wow, I tell you, I you can tell he's not wrong. really a heroin user right. because he put it. He put the tie down below the elbow. You're supposed to put it up here so you can see the oh, vein. Oh, I forgot. You know, you have a lot more experience with that. Yeah, that's right. I'm a big you know dope user. So, but uh, I'd like to uh, welcome. Uh, Kevin Johnson, who I noticed his uh, little avatar here is a uh, Natty Bow. Yeah. That's cool. I like Natty Bow. I've drank it many times. Yeah. One of those. Uh, Natty Bow is one of those uh, adjunct models which reminds me very much of old, of um, old Milwaukee, which I have a 12 pack of right now I'm drinking down the new, with the new uh, slightly updated Ooh. graphics, which actually is a throwback for 30, 40 years ago when they're talking about the leisure aspect of. We're out on the lake, just uh, right. staying a little bit and drinking the old Milwaukee. I remember when JJ's girlfriend was so like freaked out, she climbed out the window over there in uh, Gary, Indiana, and uh, he told, he said, "Mama, I'm coming home," and she said, <laughs> "Mama, I'm coming home," <laughs> and she said, "Okay, baby, okay." That was a two-part episode and they had parental discretion advised. I remember my parents told me, they said, now look, if anybody ever gives you drugs, don't take it. I'll say, after watching this, I ain't never gonna fool with drugs. <laughs> so traumatized by that episode of Good Times, you know. Well, I, I kind of have a sweet tooth also, William. Oh no, you were asking about natural, um, versus, natural artificial. versus artificial flavor. You still haven't read the description of what constitutes an artificial flavor. The class is waiting for the I, mean, I actually really want to know because the natural flavoring, there's a lot of a lot of fancy words in there, all, all to be natural. So that what was like a bunch of alphabet mumbo. Yeah, I want to know what words, what fancy words they're going to use for artificial flavoring, and see if you uh, pronounce them. That's the funny. That's the most fun is, is trying to hear right. Ron okay. pronounce these words. Drunken one has joined the uh, chat. Good to see drunken one in the house. Yeah. I want to apologize. Yeah, drunken one. I apologize for doing the the uh, smack uh, antics wrong incorrectly. Next time I'll do it above and then uh, <laughs> above the elbow, Ron. Come on. Yeah. It's, and remember it's, what if you go on, remember, remember what the song said: "Under the bridge downtown." Under um, <laughs> the bridge. I go away. Okay, now uh, the term. Okay. The term artificial flavoring means any substance, I read this already, any substance, the function of which is to impart flavor, which is not, which is not derived from a spice, fruit or fruit juice, vegetable or vegetable juice, edible yeast, herb, bark, bud, root, leaf or similar plant material, meat, fish, poultry, eggs, dairy products or fermentation products thereof. So in other words, artificial flavors don't come from those natural extracts, oils, leaf, leaves, roots, buds. They come from chemical compounds which mimic natural flavors, you understand? Right. So it could be, but but the certified color means they've, they've tested it and it's certified to not be uh, dangerous for human consumption. In other words, it won't hurt you. And I've read articles where they said artificial flavoring is actually safer than natural because uh, the problem with our nat natural flavoring, it could have more va variables. It's not controlled in a lab, so it could theoretically 
have toxins, which the artificial is laboratory created and it, there's so many controls over it. It wouldn't have those um, little leeway areas. Now I'm gonna read a few more things here. It says, uh, if the, it says, in cases where the flavor contains a solely natural flavor or flavors like this, the flavors shall be so labeled, in other words, quote unquote, strawberry flavor, banana flavor, or natural strawberry flavor. In cases where the flavor contains both natural and artificial, the flavor shall be labeled natural and artificial flavor. And then common sense, the next, the next sentence is common sense. In cases where flavor contains a solely artificial flavor, the flavor shall be labeled artificial strawberry flavor. Well, duh, you know, it's artificial. But I guess they want to be very specific, but it's kind of redundant, you know. There are some crazy things that I've heard uh, as far as like natural flavoring is concerned. I was watching an episode, this is years ago, I was watching an episode of Bizarre Foods with Andrew Zimmern, which used to be on the Travel Channel back when the Travel Channel used to show travel stuff and not travel. all paranormal stuff like they do now. Um, they might as well change the name of the channel to the Paranormal Channel. It's not yeah. so longer travel related. Anyway, Andrew Zimmer's show, Bizarre Foods, there was an episode where he was in a lab and they were talking about artificial and natural flavoring. Well, did you know <laughs> that natural raspberry flavor, some of it, is derived from the anal glands of a beaver? Because it comes, because it comes from a beaver, which is a natural source, I suppose, they consider it natural flavoring. So the next time you drink a naturally flavored raspberry drink, you may be drinking anal gland beaver juice. <laughs> okay. That's the, that's the truth. I mean, what you're I talking about, what you're talking about, John, is the casters. There's two glands on each side of the anus on a beaver. Okay, I'm not going to go into detail how I know all this stuff, but I have some background in this from years ago. And there's two <laughs> caster sacs that rest on each side of the anal gland of the beaver. It produces a lot of extra scent. So when you kill, take, harvest, whatever your preference, <laughs> you'll take the fur off the beaver. In the end, when you cut the beaver apart, those two caster glands You'll put them in a plastic bag, like a gallon Ziploc bag with a bunch of other ones. At the end of the year, you can actually sell that to a dealer and you will make money. I forget how much it paid per pound back in the late nineties when I used to do these sort of things in the early two thousands. But I know what you're talking about, but how I've smelt that. I've never smelt. <laughs> John, but John, I think some of that, is a little bit of a confusion going back, uh, being traced back to Canadian law concerning flavors and American law, US law, because I believe in Canada, there's a lot of difference between natural flavor, what they consider natural flavor and what the US considers natural flavor. I think in Canada, that's where that, that idea originated with the uh, beaver uh, thing you're talking about. I think in the United States it wouldn't qualify, but I, I have to. Keep yeah, and you could be right. Yeah, that that episode very well could have been uh, when Andrew Zimmern was in Canada at a lab in Canada. I don't know. Right. But a lot I of just, these go back to Canada, and Canada and the U.S. have pretty wide differences when they'll use the same term, the same term, yeah. but it'll mean different uh, things. When you right. use those glands, a lot of it I never knew it was used in food products. <laughs> But medicinal and perfumes, it is widely used in those products. Now, food-wise, that's news to me, but I can't say as I, you know, know much else about that other than what I've said. But I do know it was a perfume and a medicinal product. Kind of One thing I'd like to note is that the United States is the only country where they, if you uh, produce these flavor malt beverages, you have to use hops in the beer. In other countries, yeah, they can bypass that. But in the United States, you have to, which is sort of counterintuitive. You add the hops, then you take everything out that makes it a beer. But we well, were talking that's about this the other do. day, William. Yeah. So in other countries, they don't have to use the hops. We right. do, but then we go around and take them out to right. 
Okay, so like these products. They don't, take the hops out. they don't take the hops out, but they 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 create the beer as almost like a grain distillate. But the hops so have it, to, it, it has to be taken out, out along with the other whatever process they whatever. Right, so they may, they might as well never have added them in the first place. Yeah, because right. No, no, no. Uh, well, maybe, but the hops is part of the distillate process. To what William's saying. If you took a grain alcohol and you watered it down to 14% and then added all this stuff, it would still have a very watery texture. If you use a beer distillate, we're our still body to this. It isn't like drinking uh, brass. Right. That, that's, the out, that's the neutral malt beer. Right. There's a thickness and a, and a body to it that you get because it's done from a beer brewery where it's brewed rather than distilled to this. Because if you was to do it with if you was to take vodka and water it down to 14 percent and add this to it, it tastes like you was drinking water. I mean, blue colored water. And this is not that way. Yeah. But it's it's sort of counterintuitive that they have to add the hops. It has to be considered a, a full beer at one point. Right. A malt beverage. But then they remove everything that makes it a beer, the character of it, the right. aroma, the flavor, the color. So, but that's the way. And in Canada, sometimes they use they actually use spirits rather than flavor because their laws are different. There's no incentive tax wise not to use the actual spirits. So each, right. each, it's like in it's like in the United States, each state has its own beer laws. There's also different beer laws for each country. So this can get very convoluted when you start to assess, you know, these for each country. But they do you do have to put hops in it in the United States, right? And it's so not a uh, option. It's not an option. Right. And let me but read still, this here. This will show you. How, let me read this. Rest. This will show you how specific it is. And and we've said this. And this is not Tax and Trade Bureau. This is about the coloring. But we've talked about Tax and Trade Bureau. They are very specific. Like specific. Uh, but here's the, the uh, Code of uh, Federal Regulations. It says, listen to this. This is interesting. Very interesting. It says, <clears throat> if the food, and in our case, the drink, if the food contains no artificial flavor, which simulates, resembles, or reinforces the characterizing flavor, the name of the food on the principal display panel or panels of the label shall be accompanied by the common or usual name of the characterizing flavor. For example, vanilla in letters not less than one half the height of the letters used in the name of the food except that and then there's one two three exceptions so <laughs> it, it, it's wow. it's very specific even the height of the letters right it's and you have to read this very and parse the words very carefully i worked at one time in a lawyer's office and you have to parse these words very carefully you know because uh they're very, they're very artful with the way they use the language. The language is one way you can manipulate and control the population, the populace of the people. And believe me, they know what they're doing. So you have to parse every word. What do they, what do they intend to say? What do they actually say? What are they actually saying? And it gets very precise in these things. I, I enjoy that. Like I said, I worked in laws to try to, you know, just to, it's sort of getting in between the lines, under the skin. What are they actually saying? Yeah. And when you read labels and things like this, I mean, you, you have to be very, very careful what you're reading. Yeah, I took a class in tort law when I was in college. And yeah. It's rather interesting. But now I've, I, I think what I'm going to do now with mine is, I, as I mentioned, I hopped on the end of their morning Stout Sunday uh, hangout. I've got some George Dickel corn whiskey here. Now we're talking. Ninety-one <laughs> proof. I beg. Clear as a bell. I beg you, man. Do it. I beg you. Know, it. I'm going to finish up. It's like in baseball. You got your closure <laughs> for the ninth inning. You throws nothing but heat. I'm going to make a, a mini cocktail with the George Dickel and the remainder of my uh, four loco blue raz. So uh, I'm going to pour these two together and we'll uh, see how More that goes. to you. Continue to <laughs> okay. drink your beverages. No, Robert got that Jim Beam ghost. Any chance, Robert? No, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> no. You're going to be another no. 
You go another John. <laughs> gonna be another John Rock. Get, get the uh, cork. Get the nice cork. Rubberized cork, but anyway. Cork or no right. cork, don't matter. Better than no cork. <laughs> about half, I'll put about 50 50 ratio. Well, I did a bourbon with breakfast this morning. I opened up that Kentucky Vintage and drank about an ounce and a half of that with my breakfast after I got done with the 12 9 stout. So I'm done. <laughs> Hey, that omelet! That omelet looked amazing. It looked like you had some fresh jalapenos on there, maybe a little sour cream or pico de gallo. Sour cream, and then I have some homemade salsa. I make my own salsa. Yeah. I laid that really good. Good. I had a, I had two uh, scrambled eggs this morning with a uh, corned beef hash. I put a layer of uh, lard at the bottom from uh, John Morrell, John Morrell lard. Mm. I cut up, I diced the uh, yellow onion. I put it all. I put some uh, pepper jack cheese on top of the eggs, and uh, put it all together in a bowl and ate it with ate it with a spoon. Look at this maniac! You the man, Mister Kepley. You the man. This is hey. This is what happens when you do small beverage hangouts. Right. I want everybody to know. I want everybody here to know, including the viewers. I did not approve of this, and I do not approve of it now or in the future. Well, Four Loco doesn't approve of what I did with their their product because they recommend five. I just I ain't saving this, so I I poured the rest of it. I'm I'm drinking I'm it all. Not, I'm begging you not to do that. I beg you. I'll get my money's it. worth out of it. That's for sure. You'll get your money's worth tonight yeah. about ten o'clock. Just put it away. Do it. Put it away. <laughs> I'll be all right. I got a, I got a gallon of water. Cold water. I can. Chug down after the That's what Janice Joplin said when she laid down on her bed at the uh this admonition from JT just came from a person who did a heroin animation. So uh, <laughs> you gotta consider the source. I think that I would feel okay. That was pretend. <laughs> that was pretend. Y'all are doing it for uh, real. <laughs> <laughs> okay. True. <laughs> is not the same as unsimulated. Dickle and Loco. Never the twain shall meet, but they do today. I'll drink to that. I won't. I can't. I don't have anything left. Uh, that is an acquired taste I don't have. Because you're not 18. You're not 18 years old. No, oh, I'm long past that date in my life. <laughs> uh, that dog will hunt. Mm. That dog, that will, dog hunt. will hunt. But then it's going to be That's like it's going to be like where the red fern grows. It's going to get attacked by a cougar and die, and then the other dog is going to get so depressed it's going to starve itself to death. It's exactly like what you would expect. It mm. just the alcohol just amps it up that much more. But a 50-50, one to one ratio here. I'm gonna need a nap. It's pretty tasty, actually. Does the corn does the corn come into play at all? Absolutely, absolutely it does. Honestly, I might prefer that version because the alcohol the the spirit might cut through some of that sweetness and balance it out a little bit. The thing more. is, and also this, the alcohol, it, it's not the medicinal chemical like a vodka or the fusel alcohol. This is actually corn whiskey, so it meshes, sinks very well with the uh, Four Loco. So that's what I picked. Well, I didn't want anything like to deviate from just that. I just wanted to get that corn sweetness and the alcohol. So these uh, these are a good match. They really are. Uh, get a little they bit of burn, clash. but... It, they don't clash? They don't clash, really. And also, at 14%, it mitigates the the uh, 50 percent, 100, or excuse me, 45.5 proof, 91, 40, 91 proof, 45.5 percent alcohol. So it mitigates that. So what you're left with is a, let's see, 45.5 and 14. You're left with about a 29.5 percent ABV product. Out of 50 percent mix. Out of so it's you know it's it's getting up there, but it, but just cutting it in half, it makes it much more drinkable. So cheers again on a Sunday afternoon. Cheers. 
Cheers. Okay. Just- all right. You know, I kid around. I kid around and use antics. All my stuff is fake. It's all a show. I get it. But y'all want to play around? Y'all want to play games? Oh, all right. Why would you drink that one? I wouldn't. I'm just doing more antics. I'm not about to drink this. Seriously, there's a lot. I know I'm you have better. Too cowardly. I wouldn't. <laughs> Every George Dickles ever. George Dickles, proud sponsor of the best. Wait a minute. Uh, Rash Mellow is in the house. I always enjoy hanging out with him during the multi Mondays. I had a good time uh, yesterday. We Domestic were, abuse. He did a, a brew day <laughs> live stream, right. which he hasn't done in a while. We were really? on, I was on there for two or three hours, and uh, okay. it was a lot of fun. He was yeah. doing his, his pale ale home brew again, and we just. Talk about beer and you know shoot the shit. Talk about yeah, whatever. I enjoy getting to know him better on the uh, multi Mondays, and he's a really great guy. You know? Oh yeah. Hey, do y'all notice? Hey, uh, How do y'all notice going? something about this Jack Daniels? Do y'all notice something about this Jack Daniels? Is it a green, green label? Party? That's the yeah. green label. Yeah, this is the number seven, not the old number seven. Yeah. yeah. That smells kind of like grits, though. And it's not like a bourbon grits. because it's charcoal mellowed. Oh, don't you open that can of worms. I had to put the shutdown on those guys. Like William said, I deal in facts. Right. I joke around. I mean, I joke around and I'm silly and I do all that foolishness. But when I'm it comes to that, I don't care. Yeah, I'm pretty sure George Dickel is another one that, that opts out of the bourbon name, even though legally it is a bourbon. That's right. Let's put a little salted caramel in the four loco. Okay, well, here we go. Here we go. Right, William, William, turn it off. Turn the video off. This is he's too much. Bringing, he's bringing his relief. He's bringing his ninth inning stopper hey, in. Baseball. What'd you think? What'd you think you were getting yourself into with the the? Hey. It's a flavor malt beverage hangout. This is the oh well. I'll tell you what I I'll tell you what I was I was very happily watching the Atlanta Braves at the Phillies. It was no score in the third <laughs> inning. You got I got drug into this, and uh oh, I got that ahead. camera recording, so don't ruin it for me. I got I got it DVR and right now I'm gonna watch it. After well, like I said, it was no score. I couldn't run. Uh, let me say this. I'm gonna read this comment. Y'all tell me what this means because it doesn't Ooh. mean much. It's very confusing. Look at Robert now. Nah, see. That was a mistake. That was a mistake. I can tell you by the smell. That was a mistake. <laughs> See what I mean? Hey, listen to this, y'all. I'm I'm gonna read this exactly as it's written. You tell me what this what this is about. This is from the George Dickel website. Question How can I find George Dickel Cascade Hollow? You can't answer. answer. Listen very carefully. George Dickel Cascade Hollow is no longer being bottled at this time. Yeah. No longer you, being you, bottled you, at. So they've got a bunch of it sitting around in barrels, but they just don't, they're not bottling it currently. Notice not they didn't really. say it was out of production. Yeah, they didn't say it was out right, of production. Right, right. It could, exactly. They didn't say it was discontinued. They say it was no longer being bottled at this time. Right. That was a mistake. I'll not be finishing that. Oh, you'll it's finish it. That's too it's like uh, Mariano Wait. Rivera. It's we just had his sweetness on top. Great finish. Mariano Rivera. <laughs> I saw him uh, when I was a sports writer. I covered some of the games with the Greensboro uh, Sally League. Class A affiliate. And I saw Derek Jeter play as a rookie for the Yankees French, uh, organization. And also uh, Mariano Rivera when he was pitching. Yeah. yeah man. It's time for the mask. Well, uh, no. I think. I think in a little while I'm going to go and um, start a lot. Do it, huh? Rob a bank. 
this is why I get on the internet to use. You can walk things. into a bank wearing that right now, and nobody would think anything of it. True. Yeah. <laughs> True. On a Sunday. So, yeah. Rob, you know that online bullying is not really co a, a, a nice thing to do. Online bullying is hurtful, and it and it makes me very sad. Shut up. Well. <laughs> That's that, poor, that's that poor loco talking. I have a, uh, <laughs> what I was trying to say, and I'm trying to be respectful. Look at me. Don't I look like I'm trying to be respectful? What I was trying to say is I'm thinking about later this day coming on live and doing a review of Fireball. 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 I ain't never yeah. buying it, so I will have to watch. If you I've like big it. red, if you like big red chewing gum, you would like it. That's what it tastes I've like. I've bought it, I've had it, I've drank it before, but it's not something I will spend money on again. That's the best way to put it. Yeah. That's I used enough. to work <clears throat> when I lived in Columbus, Georgia. I used to go to this bar right down the street. It's no longer uh open. It's called Hangers. And it was uh kind of modeled after like an air, you know, airplane hanger. It had all the the cool yeah. art, and the, you know, like model plane hanging from the ceiling, stuff like that. Anyway, it was right across from a fire station, and there was a bell behind the bar. And every time the fire trucks would get a call and they would they would drive out and turn their sirens on and everything, the bell would ring and it would be um, dollar shots of fireball for everybody in the bar if they wanted one. Well, wow. what people started doing, they had to stop doing this because people would make fake calls just – just so that it, it would ring the bell and everybody would get would get dollar shots of fireball. So they had to stop doing that promo because of all of the complaints, all of the, the phony calls into the the fire department about fires that really weren't real. <laughs> that's a pretty that's funny story. That's a funny story, actually. <laughs> that is sad. Dang. And you got a hanker for fireball and you and you want it for a dollar, you gotta one thing I'm going to mention now is that the Four Loco was created by students at, at, at the U, Ohio State University in 2005. They actually were making their own concoction of this beverage before they fa actually founded the company. So uh, that's, that's uh, I guess, the, the true entrepreneurial spirit and capitalism in play. Mm -hmm. so, uh, the Ohio State University is responsible for Four Loco, some industrious student, students. It was for college friends. Now, how many videos right. do you watch where people pull out swords? <laughs> uh, only on flavored malt beverage videos. <laughs> we've, we've seen a little bit of everything here, I believe. So. It's kind of like this is bringing me back to when I was watching the, what was it, the Malt Liquor Mount Rushmore with Club Moses 69. and the, That's uh, Moses Club 69. That is a legend. He's a legend. Oh, my God. Uh, Sword. Why do you guys? I want to. Okay, the, the real question we should be asking ourselves is why do you guys have swords like readily available? Oh, you never know what you need. You know, you never know. Yeah, like, I mean, like Robert, Robert's like, I got my sword right here. Hey, hey that's real. I, that's ivory. That's ivory, Daddy. That's ivory. Mine's full on Mexican uh, <laughs> leather right there. <laughs> I brought mine back from Mexico in 1984, so it just—I don't know what to do with it. So it just that's a good word, Dio. Hankering. I'm hankering now for a regular adjunct logger. Yeah, that would be a right. That would be bad. I've got some this older. Great, this was a great hangout because you had, uh, like simulated heroin addiction antics, swords, uh. Reading the law from the Federal Drug Administration, Food and Drug Administration. I mean, that's pretty, pretty uh, eclectic video, right? Beaver, anal, so. anal glands, beavers. Right. I've got, oh, okay, I've got this here too. Uh, this is also yeah. very good yeah. with uh, flavored malt beverages. Like I actually have some basis in this. I'm really obscure. 
with beaver glands. <laughs> he was a hunter, you know. He was a hunter in the Alberta back in the 1980s. What now, William? What now, William? Uh, if you want a snack with your flavor malt beverage, you couldn't go wrong with six feet of meat. I knew this was coming. I was waiting for this, actually, William. I was okay, waiting. I'm glad. I, I won't. I do not disappoint. <laughs> no. Six feet of meat goes very good. It the uh, spiciness, the meatiness of this, it really uh, pairs well with the sweetness of the flavor malt beverage. That's right. They through. tend to go. Ver they tend to match, complement each other very well. This is these is this is six one foot long. Slim Jim sticks. I'll, I'll pull one out for demonstration here. Very nice. I got this at Walmart yesterday. The six pack is cheaper than buying the singles, so I bought a six pack of these. But I like to say the that spiciness, the little bit of heat. It's a perfect complement for your favorite malt beverage. <laughs> and. I might as well pull one out myself. <laughs> well, I'm wondering what's going on. I know it's four loco day, but my wife is vacuuming, and it's not Thursday. She vacuums on Thursday, so I'm not sure what the hell's going on upstairs. Yeah. The theater of right now. <laughs> that means she spilt something. <laughs> Samurai. Yeah, right. I would Kevin buy Johnson. that with my socks. I like Slim Jim. I always have. Samurai. Too, I, also yeah. go, I don't know if you guys have Orschlands or Atwoods. When you go into Orschlands or Atwoods, they'll have elk flavored, deer flavored sticks like that and various other ones. I always buy the great big packet. I love it. I love meat sticks. I don't know why. I do too. I, I like the uh, I like the uh, some of the other brands too. Yeah. They're all very good, and uh, that's one of those they call it an impulse buy when you're at the checkout. You see them up there at the cash register, you grab a couple of them. What they're hoping you'll do is that you know, when you're just uh, like I say, it's, it's considered an impulse buy. And, yeah. But I do generally, I like to drink my beers in isol just by themselves, so that isolation before I have a meal or something, just to get the full flavor of it. But uh, there are times you know, when you know, a Slim Jim, a hot dog with just a good mustard. Simple mustard, pizza, a few beer foods I do like. But generally, if the beer is worth drinking, I like to drink it sort of by itself to see what the, the brewer had intended it to taste like. Yeah. Because I, I discovered that you you introduce any food with a beer, it's going to taste different. <coughs> it always does for me. A whiskey, same way. Whiskey does. Same it way. is. It really is. So. Yeah. Uh, it depends on the moment. The moment changes, and depending on what you're eating, what you're even what your day has been like, your perceptions with beer or whiskey will change with your mood. It's strange. A comment here sort of hits home with me. If I get colon cancer from Slim Jims, it was justified. <laughs> wow, <laughs> Ben's are done that. Well, but, Craig Swinton uh, says, I have a meat stick. Well, you eat your meat stick, Craig Swinton. Uh, Kevin, Enjoy. I'm here. I'm still alive, moving forward, and glad to be glad to be enjoying this th Sunday afternoon FNB hangout. <laughs> I've enjoyed it, William. I really have. Mm -hmm. I wonder what happened to Ron, though. He uh That's what I was wondering. Uh just like me. I, I know it dropped me twice. For yeah, I don't know. I could have dropped them. I just left a comment or a, a thing in, his, in the beer talk. I said, Jay, did you just channel your inner Eric? Craig, <laughs> Craig right. made a comment in the live chat. He said, where did Thomas Metal 75 go? Oops, I mean, Mr. Terry. Up. <laughs> I don't know. It could have it could have just kicked him off. I don't know. He's He was yeah. having issues earlier, too. I don't, it's strange for him just to drop out like that. Yeah, this is a good. Not, this is a, this is an apropos comment right here. Where did that come up? Oops. Could just be uh, the the. I mean, it is a flavored malt beverage stream, so anything goes, I guess. Yeah. <clears throat> I can't finish it. I believe I'm not. I know I added the salted caramel to it, but that's. I can't go no further. I just can't. That's not. That's all that's left of the whole can, though. That little. Yeah, that's all that's left. And I, not bad. 
No. I drank. I I got through all of mine. If I hadn't added the salt to caramel, I probably could have. But again, it tastes so medicine like to me. It's I don't I like think that. Yours, Robert. I think you probably like this one a little bit better. Um, it's the same flavor, but it's not as medicinal. It's it's thinner, I guess, and the mouthfeel, and not like syrupy or medicinal. Um, I'd like to try the one William has. Because this without yeah. carbonation, just like a, I mean, that would up the smoothness level a lot because this is, it's very sweet and it's got that strong ras blue raspberry artificial flavoring. But uh, if you take the carbonation out, I could see it being a big, big improvement actually. So right. there, there's Eric. I mean, Ron, uh, hey, welcome back, Jay. Well, the one the one uh, liquor store I go into, they have a lot of Mad Dog 2020. They don't have nothing like Bootlegger or even the Four Loco series like you guys, like like William has. But they have a lot of Mad Dog 2020 in different flavors. And every time I see them, I think of Ron. Every time I look at the price, even though it's only the three to four dollar range, I go, no. You know what though? No, no. no. I tell you, man, that 2020. Um the 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 gold edition of the MD twenty twenty the it was a pineapple flavored one my god that that stuff was really good I'd like to try the dragon fruit, the one that he's got there too because I love dragon fruit although I have a feeling it's not natural dragon fruit don't have a lot of flavor though it's not very flavorful to me I've had real dragon fruit a couple of times in my life and we we bought one just to try it the very yeah. first time I had it and it just doesn't carry a lot of flavor. I got hooked on dragon fruit when I tried the, you know, the vitamin water dragon fruit flavor. Yeah. After having that, I actually went out and bought some dragon fruit. And yes, it definitely didn't have as much flavor as the vitamin water <laughs> did, but it was, I liked it. It's it kind of like a exotic pomegranate or something, you know, like it right. was just, I, I enjoyed it, but. I could probably get what Ron had there because they have like a whole display of all different flavors of it. But again, I just can't. I can't bring myself to it. <laughs> just can't. I mean, let's see that or a. I love the artwork. I love how they actually have the dragon on the label. That looks good. That, that's that's neat looking. That's, that's yeah. a good looking hey, label. Ride the dragon. Let me tell y'all what happened. Let me tell y'all what happened. As uh, soon as he pulled out that six foot. Slim Jim of meat. The meat stick. We had a power outage and it made my computer shut off and everything shut down. I said, oh dang. I had to restart the whole thing. Man. To quit like uh, our buddy in Massachusetts. And, uh, I, 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 you know, I just got knocked off. Um, I like Slim Jim. I think they have good products. I don't think you can beat their meat. And, um, <laughs> no, I like it. <laughs> Rim shot. Turn them. I don't even think he I, he didn't even realize what he was saying. Right. I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't resist. I couldn't resist. That was, that was funny, though. All right. Robert is there. Robert is there. Problem. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> 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 All right. Now, um, now, there used to be a local company here called Wagner's Meat, and that was their tagline on television and radio. You can't beat Wagner's Meat. But, um, <laughs> wow. That they sold a lot of meat with that. They did, actually. And, uh, it was interesting. It was an interesting company because it was a husband and wife. And uh oh, we have a like, new. Someone else to join the madness. Thrash. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Great discussions, guys. Awesome. Hey, I'm about to get out of here. Hey, Thrash, I'm about to get out of here. Let me tell y'all why. Because I, I just right? got a phone. <laughs> I got a phone call from. Oh, I'm about to make a video, but it's gonna be about that okay. cinnamon whiskey. It's gonna be about attacking somebody on the internet. Um, <laughs> I just got an important phone call from none other. Then the madman himself and Johnny Nearly knows what I'm talking about by personal experience. David Garland Pete said he's on his way. Uh oh. David Garland Pete. Sit down, do some tastings. 
Yeah, he's on his way. So, uh oh, John and Neely's had some experience along those lines, haven't you, John and Neely? Oh yeah, oh, they, was, they was a lot of fun. Yeah, just be careful. You got a malt bed, Virginia, and now you got to do the and fireball. And I know David's going to be pushing. David's going to be. He's the pusher, man. He's going to be pushing all kinds of stuff. Hey, try this. Try this. Try. Let's do this. Yeah, well, this. We, we have to uh, put fireball on the back burner. I'm afraid. <laughs> hey, thrash <laughs> metal. Thrash metal. You were watching our hangout. Yeah, I watched. Uh, I watched, uh, I started watching when you guys started, uh, you were really ripping into the Four loco, but uh, I, I'm like you, I don't like that stuff. It's too, too sweet. It's just, no. otherwise I would have joined you guys. That stuff is just like, I mean, it's an acquired taste, I guess you would call it, because it's punch. It's like the fruit punch, yeah. high ABV stuff. I drank like, Four wow. loco. I drank the original Club Tales, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not into that too much at all. That's a good thing. You be very happy about that. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, there's a lot of people that love it. You know, the, I, I have a lot of friends that drink it and it's like good for you. You know, it's just, I'd rather, I, I'm into the malts, barleys, and hops straight up old school stuff. So, right. Right. Now, William, uh, a lot of people would call this a bum wine. But, you know, that's sort of unfair because uh, I think a lot of people drink this. I think a lot of people that drink this are not bums who live in the streets. Now, I'm not saying they have a great palate for wine. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying they're erudite wine reviewers. But on the other hand, I think there are people who are gainfully employed that drink this. Well, yeah, and, um, you know, just, yeah, you gotta just work to go off what you're here, saying, <laughs> what, going off what you're saying there, when I was eight, 17, 18 years old, when we were drinking MD 2020, we didn't even know it was Morgan David. It was Mad Dog, you know. Oh, and Morgan was, Dog. Was, yeah. yeah, Mad Dog. You know, oh. it was, but that kind of <laughs> left, when you hit about 20 years old, it's like, you know, you're Especially when the drinking age is 18. I didn't know it was Mogan David until I started watching uh, Louisiana Beer Reviews. And he, you know, I always thought it was Mad Dog. I like, that's what I thought the. <laughs> yeah, I had no idea. No, oh, I actually read the liquor store to buy Mad this. Dog appropriate to Mogan David for 2020, actually. You got to be mad to drink that stuff. I went to the store. Right, but get to the liquor store to buy this. It's a very famous place called Star on Louisiana Highway 49. And I brought it to the counter, and the man says, he looks back. He says, hey, how much for the Mad Dog? Oh, $3.99. Okay, $3.99 plus tax. So he called it Mad Dog, you know, but, but you're yeah. right. The official name is Mogan Dog 2020. Yep. yep. Never even knew that until I got my 30s and 40s. Had no clue. Yeah, Mogan David means Mogan David means the shield of David. It's the star that's on the Israeli flag. Yeah. That's why we have him around. Smart that way. He could just be making it call off, and we would, I would, we wouldn't know the difference. <laughs> uh, Jeremy, you're right. Jeremy, look at Jeremy. But but it should be. I'm just glad there are five people, plural. Don't discount the intelligence of FNB drinkers. That's right. We may drink a legitimate FNB, product. But we're not stupid. There are five. We're people. not the Baltimore Blonde. Yes. Yeah, so the, yeah, the re refurbished uh, American Blonde. I've never seen that. I haven't it's seen that. No flavorings, no colorings, water, barley, malt, hops, and yeast. Huh. Yeah. Made in Baltimore County, Maryland. Yep. Or five people. You know, a beer that, a beer that, that tastes like, you know, beer. Yeah. Ryan Hotskaboot. Hey, William. Ryan Hotskaboot. Hey, William. Right. It's Yo. Well, thanks, for, thanks for letting me join and... Um, I better go walking. My friend Davis, come. 
who knows what will happen. Life could join. No, I'm not. I especially enjoyed that uh, the heroin oh, addict thank you. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> animation routine. That that was that was classy. That really amped it up here. That that that, that was that little special sauce that added to this hangout. So uh, I appreciate that. But, uh, right, I like the, I like I like to classy up the things. But John Neely, he's the medical guy. You got to get the uh, you got to get the pressure above the elbow. You know, above the elbow. And uh, I think I'll go. <laughs> I think and I'll if, go and listen to is, some Velvet Underground now. Right. And if this is this much fun, just imagine how Ice Beer Monday, Multi Money is going to be. It's going to be a riot. Ooh. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a riot. I got natural ice upstairs cooling right now. I have, mul I have mul multiple choices. So, uh, I have yeah, a feeling I'm William sure. has one that's probably not easy to come by because he, he gets yeah. some interesting stuff where he lives that not a lot of us right. can get. Yeah. I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring the only draft uh ice beer. Uh, the see. only thanks for ruining my party. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean <laughs> come on. Hey, Bud Ice is now back here. They sell it in the clear. 40 ounce glass bottles and the brown 40 ounce glass bottles here. Love it. If they're going, to, they're going to Brown. Well, uh, Brian, good seeing you and good oh, you seeing too. you, Robert. Yeah. Well, good seeing you, John. And William, thanks for inviting me. I you're, you're welcome. I, I enjoyed it. Uh, I did. And Thank you. And y'all take care now and have a good Sunday afternoon and, and uh, go White Sox tonight at seven o'clock Eastern time. Go White Sox, go White Sox. All the fans the in this room. We got. I wish do, I had a dollar. Do a, we got to do another beer hang. A uh, hangout with beer and baseball. Talk about Comiskey right. Park. Beer and uh, uh, Harry Carey. I might do the next one on prime time. That would be right. fun. You can never wish I had a dollar. talk about baseball. True. No. I wish I had a dollar. I wish I had a dollar for every fan in the stands at all the major league games this weekend. <laughs> be yeah. I'd have no money. You'd have no money. You'd have some cardboard cutouts, though. Yeah. Right. I did see that no hitter that was last yesterday or last night that was. Who? Which team? He dropped the. It was a left field hit, and he dropped the ball. He he didn't drop the ball. He lost the ball in the lights. That and, was the Giants game in, yeah. in uh, Los oh. Angeles. Okay. Uh, Johnny Cueto had a no hitter going into the sixth inning, I think. Oh, and he yep. lost okay. the ball in the he lost it in the sky, and it fell behind yep. him for a triple. The yep. next guy drove him in, and then he got he got touched up for a three run home run yep. by uh, Justin Turner. Mm. But the Giants wound up winning the game five to four. Michael Komarov is a big Giants fan, and so am I. And we did yeah. a hangout a Friday night over. We started at 1 a.m., which was 10 o'clock West Coast time. And we had people join in at like 2.30 in the morning. <laughs> it was pretty fun. Wow. Yeah. Uh, just talking baseball. Baseball is so, you know, you can never run out of topics to talk about him with baseball. I'm a baseball, real big baseball fan myself. Exactly. And uh, just the stories, the lead, Babe Ruth, you know, everybody, it just, it's just a, a, a juicy topic. Talk about and drink beer and talk about baseball. That was fun. I'd like to join that sometime because you know, uh, usually, I may do. I may do another I, one. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I, uh, we did that at I one own my team, but I don't have that it. that back knowledge like you got on like Ruth and no. and you know all of the the big hitters back in the day. I usually just follow my teams like the yeah. the, the the Rockies and then Rockies. You know, hockey. I do the the Avalanche and. That's pretty much it. I rem I remember when the Rockies made the World Series in two thousand seven. Mm -hmm. They had a they had they had a real run at the end of the regular season and made the playoffs and advanced all the way to the World Series that year. I remember. Let's see, a yeah, third was baseman fun. they had was, uh, that was Vinny a Castillo. Fun. Yeah, I remember Vinny. Uh, um, first baseman uh, Todd Helton. Yeah, they had some yep, good. Todd that was a good team. All those guys. Such great players. Walt Weiss. He was a he was a coach for a long time. Walt Weiss was a player at, at my state. He was a, a player at University of North Carolina. He was a shortstop in college. Yeah. 
So I saw him play he, in college. Yeah, he's a really good player. Yeah. Well, he, he was a great coach, too. He, he coached the Rockies yeah. for a few years. So that was fun. But, yeah, I'd love to join that and talk that baseball. Would be, yeah, we, uh, Michael Komaroff is a very knowledgeable baseball fan. He, he knows his stuff, and we really we got along well together. And I might do that again. Like I said, it was we did it at 1 a.m. Okay. Uh, Friday into Saturday morning. So uh, I may set up another one of those. You're well, you're welcome to come. I mean, I love baseball. Oh yeah, uh, just, cool. Just bring a baseball beer, something you could drink in a ball game. You know, yeah. we can remember the next day what happened during the game. So, <laughs> <laughs> a sensible beer. Yeah, a twelve dollar yeah. four percenter. Don't right, bring that's right. Four the four loco is not sensible. <laughs> no, that's not. <laughs> but you know. There was an old saying that if baseball had a circulatory system, it would pump blood. It would pump beer instead of blood. Yeah, because yeah. it's so intertwined with the history of the game and uh, all these sponsorships the old brands had. That's the reason I still drink all those brews because yeah. it reminds me of when I was a kid playing yeah. baseball and, and, and watching the baseball games on Saturday afternoon. You the, the ad back then the advertisements were beer, cig. Uh, Razor blades and cigarettes. If yeah. a man had those, he was well. He was. He had it. He had it. He had it going on. Yep. You know? I remember so all it that. It just reminds me of those times yeah. and of my father and stuff. And so uh, it's just a. I more never mind you than anything. Baseball games. As long as you're attending the baseball game in person, it's always kind of fun. But I can never watch it on TV. I, after my grandmother passed and. I just couldn't. I just didn't mean nothing to me anymore after she passed. I watched baseball with her until the mid nineties, and after that, it was. Yeah, well, you know, baseball is a lot better to watch nowadays. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it, it was great back in the, the day too, but um, it's a lot better to watch than golf. I'm telling you. Yeah, I'd I watch baseball I, any day of the week than golf. I, I don't know about that. They both put me to sleep pretty quickly. <laughs> I like watching both, but I I totally get why baseball is – I love watching baseball now, whereas maybe 30, 40 years ago I wouldn't have liked it so much because now you have all of the, the stats and stuff put on the screen for every player at bat. You've got the, the strike zone box. You can see how fast each pitch is, where exactly it lands in the strike zone. And, like, it's an, it's amazing to watch now because – you can literally follow the analytics and watch the how accurate, like really get a good grasp on oh, what's yeah. taking place in the game. Whereas you couldn't really do that like 30 yeah. years ago. Well, like I said, it was a thing that me and my grandmother did, and I just lost its appeal after she passed. I just, I just yeah, because it was something that she had in common with her, and now well, that she's gone, it's when you watch it, probably makes you sad because she's not there. I was a New York Yankees fan in the 80s. Then the 90s when Colorado Rockies got their team, I thought finally a closer team. My grandmother was always a Royals fan because, you know, Kansas, and she's a Royals fan. But I just can't bring myself to liking the Royals. I, think know, to go I have to go to find Brett Mitt that my wife – okay, I've had this Mitt since probably the early 80s. My wife – wrote our name on it. I had kept it pristine. She takes it to this softball game and she writes the name on something. She doesn't even tell me which mitt she gets. She just goes in there and gets mitts. Oh. I said, Baby, I got five different softball mitts in that box. Why did you take that to me? Wow. So, anyway, she didn't mean to and I, there's nothing I can do about it now, but I have a George Brett signed mitt in the box. Even though I'm not a Royals fan, I just one of those yeah. things you wind up with. Yeah, I, my dad used to take me to uh, the Denver Bears games when the Bears were the professional team. Were they yeah. in the Pacific Coast League? They I were in the Pacific they were. Coast. Yeah, a Triple A franchise. Yeah, I remember him buying me the little miniature yeah. bats and stuff at the game. I, you know, I was young. I was probably five, six years old. Do you remember when Coors had the baseball bat bottles? Yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. Back in the early seventies. Yeah. Jay's actually got a couple of those still in his. I bet know, he does. <laughs> he does. Yeah, he's showing them on his his. Uh, he's if you look up, four loco. 
Coors Banquet reviews from back from like 2012, That's 2013. Cool. He shows them all off. Mm-hmm. Yep. Cool. So, Brian, what are you yeah, drinking? Home brew? Yeah, I tapped in my other five gallon uh, keg of my white IPA. It's it's in the seven percent range. It's got some good uh, uh, lacing on it. That's one of the ones you sent me that exploded in the box. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. But yeah, it's it's um, looks good. It's not, it, it, you can see shadows through it. It's not quite clear. It's just a little opaque. It uh, the carbonation in there is keeping that the head a little bit. If you watch it, it uh, kind of regenerates a little bit. But it's uh, nice and malty. It hides the seven point whatever percent. It's a sipper. What did you brew yesterday? I did. I, I did a pale ale yesterday. Pale ale. That one, uh, if it attenuates down to where it usually does, that one comes out to about six to six point three percent, which is nice. Cool. Yeah. Now you need to brew a four loco. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's like you might as well take vodka, pour it in a container, and put fruit punch <laughs> for me. It's a malt. <laughs> I agree with you on that one. <laughs> he's, got a lot, he's got a lot of hemorrhoids to make sure it's really good. It's lime. It could be, you know, that's probably the closest yep. thing he's got to malt malt beverage with the limeade in there. Yep. It's good. Brad, right, what, what are your main hops? What's your hops in that beer? In this one? Yes. Let me uh, look it up real quick. Give me a second here. I've, I've gotten into hopology to try to figure out what the hops are in the beers I drink. So uh, yeah, so I, I simplify the beers that I make because if you uh, if you complicate it too much, it's not really worth it, and you get disappointed sometimes. So sometimes, I, yeah, yeah sometimes it's less it's more. Yeah. So this was the um, where are you? Is a white IPA, ten gallon batch. I, uh, uh, Fittering hop, Sim Simcoe, and Simcoe mosaic all the way through it. So I did an ounce of Simcoe at sixty, an ounce of Simcoe at twenty. So there's your flavoring hop, yeah. and then the aroma hop was mosaic at uh, twenty minutes as well. So for me, the Simcoe, I get sort of a tangerine note. Yeah, they have got some really good fruit flavors that pop out of yeah. there. You get. Um, you get uh, some grapefruity type citrus notes off of it. Um, it. It's all around Simcoe and Mosaic are really good hops together. So is Amarillo with them. They're, Amarillo is a really good hop. Yeah, some of them they call dual hops. So it can sell, they can serve as a flavoring agent and also the bittering agent. Yeah, so like a Cascade. You know, yep. so it's good to use those all those well-rounded hops sometimes. Yes, yeah. Cascade is, is usually used in. Uh, I usually use it as one of the late hop additions because Cascade is such a low alpha acid. So it doesn't contribute too much to the bitterness to the beer, but it yeah. contributes to all that flavor. And the Cascade's uh, Chinook uh, Centennial, the sea hops that are the West, depending on what you go to, you're going to get in this notes. The Cascade round, the uh, style IPA. For, for, uh, so I like to add that at the end because it really dances well on the tongue when uh, when you make a really good IPA that's not a bomb. I hate making you know too strong of a, a bittering beer, a bitter beer. So I, yeah. I love having the flavors through, throughout. Which yeah, hops are fun. Hops are fun to study. Yeah, that's one thing. When I was getting my taste buds back after my chemo, I could start to taste again. I liked an IPA because I could discern some of those flavors. Yeah. To try yeah. to pick out the different hop strains in it. It's like <clears throat> you sort of have a visual image of what's running through the beer. And that yep. was one reason I could I could discern that I was getting my taste buds back. Yeah. It's by drinking uh, an IPA, which you know has a barber. has a pretty complex flavor profile. Yeah, it's, well, I always look at beers like like the ones I make is, um, well, any beer really, uh, when you're dealing with different types of, of hops and everything, it's like the old barbershop pole at the front of the barbershop. Oh, yeah, spin, yeah. It all intertwines and you can kind of pick the take through the, the drink ability that you have from the time it hits your, 
hits your uh, your tongue until it's it down the gullet. You get such a sensation throughout that whole thing. It's very nice. That's what I, yeah. I love about it. Able to play with that and make all of it just work. You just keep playing with it. So you get one that makes sense to your mouth. Yeah, I've learned a lot by going to some brewery tours, the local breweries, where they let you sniff the hops yeah. and actually taste the barley, the different yep. ones. I know the pale malt to me tastes like grape nut cereal. It is. Or and like I went uh, home and drank a beer and I made the instant connection just in my brain. I said, okay, you know, and that was very inner. That was very. And when John Neely visited me uh, last springtime, we went to the Foothills Brewery in Winston Salem. Yeah. And uh, got the taste, you know, sniffed the hops. And it, it, it was a, a pretty sunny day and seemed like nobody else wanted to take a tour. So he just let us have a private tour. So we, we, awesome. I'm going to do it anyway. So we just the two of us went back and, and did the full. John, I think you drank the uh, the sexual chocolate. Yep. And that road getting a taste, the roasted malt was really, you know, yeah. interesting because you get – you know, I mean, I don't know. That's the whole, that's the only time I've ever done that. And then, you know, they had the hops. Obviously, they you know didn't recommend eating the hops, but you yeah. kind of put them in your hand and just get a good aroma. Um, yeah, get that. It was a lot there. of fun. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. You'd come across the different types of things out there, like the cream of wheat tastes that you get. Yeah, the, the oats when you're tasting the flaked oats. They're pretty bland when you're using flaked oats, but when they go into the beer itself, when it's all done, what it what the magic of maltodextrin and flaked oats and flaked corn and all of it do to a beer on uh, really holding the beer up in your mouth for that nice, luscious, smooth, uh, enveloping mouthfeel that you get. I, I just love that, that you can play with some of the stuff that just – We'll take a beer to next level. Drink one a thing pound. about beer. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Rob. Robert, were you say something? No, no. I was, oh. I was just on here. Actually, it's kind of ironic. I'm on here with Thrash, and then I'm talking to my good friend in Kersey, Colorado, just north of Thrash. Oh. He's been emailing me. <laughs> so oh, Thrash, okay. where he's at. Curtis, One thing good. about um, and Robert, I know Robert can attest to this because he's the whiskey scout after all. But uh, one thing I learned about good whiskey is when you're drinking it, you kind of let it hit all corners of your mouth. And then when you swallow it down, you press it up against the roof of your mouth with your tongue right before you swallow it down. And that just gives you like the full effect. Uh, the same thing applies to beer. A lot of people don't, you know. You know, like naturalized, maybe not so much. I mean, although it, it does, you do get more of the flavor that way. But like with a good barrel aged stout or a really good craft beer, you know, kind of swish it around a little bit and then press it up against the roof yeah. of your mouth with your tongue. And you'd be surprised how much that enhances the flavor. Like it, it just gives you like the full effect of the beer, the spirit, whatever well, it is. Sucking you're some air in. Well, it's, it's sucking some air in too, where it, it, uh, it actually helps with the. The yeah. flavor it helps mm -hmm. with your your uh, nose to your tongue sensation too. Well, with whiskey, nice. when you do that, you swish it around your mouth. You take a big inhale as you swallow. You try to anyway. I do, and as it goes down, you kind of give a gradual exhale. Then that next inhale mm -hmm. as it comes through, try to score, try to try to use your nose as much as possible. You'll feel the flavors cascade across the tongue from the tip to the back, from side to side. And that's then then the flavors that develop because I had a I had a, a graphic one time that showed it. But you know, you get the sweetness on the front of the tongue, you get your bitterness on the back of the tongue. The sides of the tongue give you your sourness and a little bitterness, and it all just kind of your, your tongue tells the tale. I mean, you, you have so many receptors in there. So many of your taste receptors are in your tongue. And that's very important. Because if you just take and you shoot it back, then all you're getting is what's in the back of your tongue. And you're getting most of your alcohol in your back of your tongue. And you get most of your bitterness in the back of the tongue. And for those people that shoot whiskey or tequila or whatever else it may be, 
you're missing a lot of the flavor profile. It's not meant to be drank that way. Some things are okay. I, I don't, <laughs> some things are. Maybe four loco should be drank that way. <laughs> but <laughs> once you get into a quality spirit, let's put it that way, or a beer for that instance, take your time. Take smaller sips. Enjoy the sip. And let it coalesce through your palate. And you'll have a much better experience. Yeah, that's right. The spirit in the glass isn't running from you. Take your um, time, sip it, and enjoy it. <laughs> Not if you're doing shots. Well, shots are a whole different ballgame. Shots, <laughs> shots are for shit you don't really want to taste. I'll be brutally honest. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Somebody asked up there, uh, I think it was Kevin Johnson earlier. Let's go to light beer. Yeah, what's everyone's favorite go-to light beer? And for me, I, ha I hate to say it, and to be brutally honest, I don't drink a lot of light beers, but when I do, generally it's Bud Light. I mean, honestly, it's... I'm with you. I'm yeah. with you. Bud Light. Coors that's Light is too that, much that's of a problem for me because, because I don't drink a lot of light beer. Yeah, I would probably say Coors Light or Mick Ultra. And the reason being, when I go visit my parents, that's what my mom always has in the fridge, one of the two, and I'll drink it. But that's about it as far as the exposure yeah. that I have with light beer because I will not buy light beer just to drink for myself. Yeah. So the only time I get it is when I'm at my parents and my mom either has Coors Light or Michelob Ultra in the fridge, and they're both good. They're just too, too watery for me, yeah. you know? Sometimes yeah. I'll drink one of the light beers to chase one of the flavored malt beverages. <laughs> yeah. The contrast of the really I, sweet and something like a light yeah. beer is that we can actually taste some of the oh. hoppiness of a light this beer. This is a light beer for me because I just got, you know, that's why I'm drinking the natural ice to get the yeah. Four loco just to kind of. It's a nice contrast. Yeah. Get it's back like to the, beer, you know, get some hot out. notes, get that that malt, the, 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 the beer flavor back in my life. In fact, right back. yeah, it cleanses the palate too between beers that are like dipping into the craft beer. It helps your mouth and everything so that when you go have another one, a different yeah. one, you're not, it, it helps uh, with the flavor and all that again. You know, what I like is something that's like the contrast, it's like the light and the shade. Like in music, where Led Zeppelin had very heavy part of the music, then it would get softer. And yeah. and the Nirvana, heavy and then soft. They would be softer in the verses and hard on the choruses. Yeah. It created an even heavier effect. And with beers, if you sample different ABVs and different styles, you get that contrast. And that's what I, th that's yeah. what I enjoyed being like a an all-inclusive drinker, I guess. You know, I, right. I don't discriminate against any of them. <laughs> Like I talking about be light beer, ice beer for me is like a regular beer. A little bit, you yeah, know. It is to me too. PBR and Miller High Life would be my choices for light beer because those to me are light beers. That's as light as I like to go. And those are two of my favorites. P PBR, uh, Miller High Life. I, I do like old Milwaukee as well as well, but it's harder to come by. Miller Miller High Life and PBR are everywhere here. Those to me would be my choices, um, Kevin, for light beer, because that that's to me would that's as light as I would buy. Uh, Kevin, you know. Kevin, where are you located at? Because you just put I in there, you get a you get a case for twenty three bucks. I that's think cheap. he's in Virginia or Maryland. Okay. Because that's a really good. Yeah, he, I think he yeah. said he was in the Virginia area. Really good. That is a really good deal, Kevin. We get uh, a twenty four pack of Modelo here would probably be like twenty seven ninety nine somewhere in that range. Close like to thirty dollars. PBR too. PBR is a great go-to as well. I can get a I can get a twelver of sixteens for twelve bucks. Yeah, that ain't bad. Yeah, there you go. Commerce Commerce got the right idea. That fifteen, you can get a fifteen pack of this. Um, this in yeah. the Keystone. I love how you can buy the fifteen packs. They're seven. They're both seven ninety nine in my area. What's the ABV on those? Though? Because <laughs> both the Keystone Ice. And the natural ice cream. They both have the baby blue and the black. They both have the same color scheme for their 
for their beers. I'll have to go try that out. I thought it was like a four in the. No, it's, it's five point nine. All uh, the Bud Ice is five point five. Yep. The natural yep. ice and the bush ice are both five point nine. Well, and the Milwaukee's yeah, best ice and right, the that's five point nine. Mickey's is five point six. That's a yeah. malt liquor, but you know, ice beers and malt liquor sort of co-mingle. Well, yeah. the Mickey's oh, ice, ice the Mickey's ice brewed ale is five point eight. Yeah. I never it's, like, it's a couple of kicks above that. All right. Right. I keep like, okay, right, I'll go get some. I keep flirting with buying the PBR extra. You can get it. Six point five. Yeah, yeah, I can get it. Six point five. It's awesome. Six point five. We can get it here in Denver. I just we can't I get it have... here anymore. I bought it one time. There was one twelve pack. I bought the twelve pack. Uh, six months later, I saw a six pack of the the sixteen ounce cans which I bought, and I looked at the date, and it was uh, five months past the Best Buy date. So <laughs> no, it, no, this it was in my area cool. for one week. This is in the only small pack in just, my area. I just seen it in this. Oh, we got a liquor. We got two liquor stores, three liquor stores in Winfield, but two that I go to. And I noticed they had it hmm, about three weeks ago. And every time I go in there, I look at it and I think about it because it's got a higher ABV than normal PBR. But I'm just not a huge PBR fan. And I actually, before I bought this right here, this Fields and Ivy. I actually picked the 12 pack out of the case, carried it around. Then I seen the breeze deal from Lawrence, Kansas. And I thought, well, I got X amount of dollars. Yeah. That I'm going to spend today. And this is, I'd rather have the breeze deal than the PBR extra. So I put it back. Yeah. Every PBR is still pretty cheap yeah. here. It's not I, the hipsters. Yeah. It's not like, uh, I think it's eight 99 for a 12 pack here. It used to be even cheaper than that, but, Eight ninety nine is pretty dang cheap for a twelve pack. Oh, well, the twelve pack for the the PBR extra is nine ninety nine. It's the no, same about price. Regular, yeah, well, yeah, regular. But it's the same was, price as the regular twelve pack. Nine ninety nine, either oh, one. Okay. Yeah. I don't. I think we get it a little cheaper here. The PBR is a little like cheaper. To, you know, every once in a while, I like to get a Miller High Life. I like to get the, you know, those things. I mean, nothing wrong with them. I mean, nothing wrong with. It, they're a great break from the crap beer sometimes you know to like i said refresh your palate yeah but miller high life brings too much of that formaldehyde taste and i just can't you know it goes back to ninth grade biology class you <laughs> back when you were drinking formaldehyde. There, so you were fortunate and then when you drink your first miller high life and you get that formaldehyde note and that i just now coors if i'm going to sit at a bar and drink uh, and eat at a bar, a grill, bar and grill. I will always get the cooler shorties. That to me, that goes the best with food. I prefer it to Budweiser any day of the week with food. I don't I know why. They're, they're beach aged, uh, whatever they do for the beach aged stuff. It's kind of it, it's kind of an oddball taste for me. That's why I go for the that's why I go for the Bud Light, you know, or Budweiser Bud Light type thing because it doesn't have it in there. I'll drink yeah. it. Coors or Coors Light if it's put in front of me, but it's if I had a choice between the two, I'm a, I'm a bud. Yeah, on the bud on the bud. light, I agree with you, Thrash. On the light end of scale, I have to yeah. go with Bud Light as well. If I'm drinking full flavor between Bud and Coors, yeah. I'm going to choose Coors every day. I don't know why that is, but it just you might be you might surprise yourself the Coors uh, and like PBR because I we I think we all thought that Coors Banquet was going to win the. Uh, the, the beer tournament on Williams Channel, but PBR the street was it was uh, it's such a great beer. I mean, it's a really good beer. PBR we are, word I'm we are for. so far off for where yeah. we started at this trip. Poor loco. But no, it was it was uncontent. The PBR was uh, three nothing or four. Uh, I can't remember how many people we had on the stream, but everybody. Pick PBR over course yeah. banquet for the and it won so what, unanimously. What's the price difference between hams over PBR? About the same. Hams, it's it's hams, hams is hams is slightly cheaper being a budget. Okay. It's, it's market is a budget beer, so it's yeah. probably a buck or two okay. bucks less for us. Six or twelve pack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably about the same That's here. I guess it just depends on the area. It, it, it depends on the market and what the, the market, these distributors yeah. they watch what the other one. 
couple years ago, there was a price war here with the ice beers, and the bush ice got down to 472 for a 12 pack. It got below five bucks Whoa. for a 5.9 percent yeah. ice beer. So it just depends on your market, the demographics, the and every. There's a lot of factors going into how they price the beer. All the guys came out from underneath the bridge, fight all up. Man. Here's a comment here about the uh, Budweiser headaches. I know Ron Terrio talks about the ice pick on the brain uh, with the Budweiser. I never had that. Uh, some people do. I never have, but some people, the rice definitely adds to the Christmas of it. That's the reason yeah. they add the rice adjunct. So they're adding an adjunct, not just a, a powder or a liquid. So it does affect the flavor and the taste of the Budweiser. And I think that's why some people, I like that Christmas stuff. I like, it's sort of like the burn, the tingle. But some people might find that a little bit over the top. So I can, I can understand that too. I that's like the rice adjunct beers, but, and, you know, Budweiser was one of those, that was like a second chance beer for me. I yeah. really do enjoy it, but I was not always a fan of it. And there's so many rice adjunct beers out there that I think are better than Budweiser. Like Asahi Super Dry, I think, is one of the best rice adjunct beers on the market. Yeah. Um, there's a lot I of think, local. Go ahead. I think for me, the, the Budweiser is tagged as the king of beers. So sometimes I think I've had higher expectations for it than maybe I should have. To me, yeah. you know, and it's it sort of, it's like, well, it's average, but I would always reach for something else. I mm -hmm. think as a general rule, the Molson Coors beers are a little maltier than the adjunct lagers. Yes. They have a little bit more malt presence than the Budweiser products. Because they use the most of flavored them. scale, I have to agree, except for when Budweiser does like the nitros or the copper. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Or the black oh, oh, yeah, that's a that's a different that's animal different there. When yeah, they their get nitro the is, is very good. Yeah, I, I'm glad you their, tried that, Robert, because um, you know that that's probably the best beer from the Reserve series that I've tried so far. It reminds me a lot of Boddington's Pub Ale, but it's a little bit more. Honestly, it's a little bit hoppier. It's got more of a hop bite than the Boddington's does. Um, I've had Boddington's, but I can't remember enough to carry the, to compare. Them yeah, to. Boddington's is good, but but the um, it's very similar to the the Nitro uh, right. Gold Reserve from Budweiser. But I find that the the Budweiser has a little bit more of a hot bite on it, and overall maybe a little bit more balanced. But I mean, you want to talk about an easy drinking, sessionable <laughs> Nitro beer. There's not a lot of them out on the market because most of the nitro stuff is like stouts, you know. So right. Boddington's is one of the few. Uh, and then now the Budweiser one. I'm trying to think of other nitro beers that are not stouts that are really good. Uh, not many. There's not a lot. It's an untapped market, really, because the nitro gives it that creamy, easy, you know, mouthfeel that you don't get with a, with a lot of beers. And um, – Honestly, I would love to try just a regular. You know what would make Budweiser better? Just nitrogenize it. Just a regular Budweiser. Nitro Budweiser. <laughs> That'd be interesting. I'd drink it. Yeah, I can't, I, heard it, man. I can't get ham. Sutton bought it off. Trey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That could be. That, that's actually believable. That is, you know, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I get hams here. We get six packs of 16 ounce cans here for $3.99 to $4.49. So it's a budget beer. Here, but, uh, we got it here. I see it. Hams is always done very well in, in shootouts. Uh, I'll drink it every once in a while. I have the shirt. I mean, hell yeah. Yeah. yeah it was good. In 2017, the Chicago Tribune did a macro beer test and they brought in craft brewers to do the taste test from Goose Island and some of the other local ones. They said hams was number one. They had PBR number two. So hams is uh, hams has a little bit of a citrusy lemon note, I think, which appeals to people who are looking something a little bit distinctive about an adjunct lager, something that sets it apart from just a run of the mill crowd. Right. Whether it be like the PBR has a little bit of a wine note, white wine, which is I think a tribute to their yeast that they use. Probably. Or yeah. the Coors Banquet has a little bit of a banana note. So people that drink these on a regular basis are looking for something a little bit distinctive about that it might set them apart from the pack. And I think that's why they tend to do well in the shootouts for taste tests and why PBR won the one that we did. Well, the, yeah. the whole talk, and I, I kept up at the chat to see if Ronald Sutton was going to appear. 
<laughs> if it's Evan Williams bottled and bond, that and JW Dent bottled and bond, both of those are neck and neck about price for price, and they're both very good. I have to agree with him on that. That I, I would yeah. concur on that. Yeah, now, if it's standard. If it's the standard Evan Williams, then I'm going to prefer the JW Dent bottled and bond. But honestly. When you get down to that price range, the bottled and bomb versions of either Evan Williams or J.W. Dent are pretty much about the best you can get. I would, I would concur 100% with that. I like the white label, Evan Williams. That hundred I did too. Evan, I was, Evan Williams is probably one of my favorite budget bourbons. And you know what? Jim Beam is, is kind of – it's not much more – not the regular Jim Beam, but you can get the Jim Beam Black. It's not the, you know, the eight-year anymore. But the, I like the Jim Beam Black. And the double oat, which is also twenty three ninety nine for the yeah, bottle. I prefer the Evan. I, I tell you what, that this, in all honesty, you got to go for me now. And I drink a lot of bourbon, mind you. But these two here, in all, in all honesty, either one of those for the I don't price, you're going to have yeah. a tough time beating. They're both very good. I've got an extra bottle of this one. Yeah. This one's still readily available. Sometimes I got to hunt around for the JW Dam. I've, I've got both of those right now. So I'm drinking on the Dan and the uh, Evan Williams. And I'm, I showed my, I don't know if uh, Thrash saw my uh, corn whiskey, the uh, George Dickel 91 proof. This is just a straight corn whiskey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've seen, I've seen that. Yeah. It's clear as a bell. Yeah. Wow. And I mixed a little bit of it with my uh, Four loco before we... Oh, that was a punch. That was a punch. <laughs> <laughs> that dog was a punch. Four loco is a caveat to all of this. If you can get the Jim Beam Distiller's Cut, that's a six-year-old, it generally comes in at nineteen ninety-nine thereabouts. And it was a limited release, but it's still pretty readily available on store shelves. It is actually better than either one of these. I will be honest. I mean, to me, it is better than either one of these. Uh, but outside of that, the Jim Beam bottle on Bond doesn't really quite hold up to either one of these. I believe in my direct taste test, Evan Williams did beat the JW Damp, but it was really close. It's It's... The double oak is good, Robert. I don't think you've had that one. The Jim Beam double oak. That's a really good one. I got Jim Beam double oak. Do you? You don't. You don't like the double oak? It's good. It's all right. Whatever. Not everybody's right just a fancy palate over there. Right there yeah. you go. All right. Yeah, I really well, like the double oak. And it's the same well, price here as the. Um, I believe it's the same price as the Jim Beam Black. And actually, I think it might be. I think I like it a little bit better. Then the red, not the eight-year, just the standard one they sell now. Right, I understand what you're saying, but double oak is pretty good. If I'm going to go the double oak, I'd rather have the devil's cut, to tell you the honest to God truth. If I'm going to go heavy on the oak, let's go ahead and skip past this and go straight to the devil's I cut. I like the devil's cut, too, but it was a little on the um, – well, the double oak was a little smoother, I guess, which I liked. The, yeah. devil, the devil's cut was a little – I don't want to say harsh because, it, I mean, it, it was. It's harsh. <laughs> no, you're right. That's a good way of putting it. But if you if you don't mind the harshness, it's better, mm -hmm. I think, in the end than the double oak. But that's personal. Everybody's Alex, the beer master has checked in. Alex. Oh, Alex is here, yeah. Uh, Robert, did you, ever, did you ever get to try the Jim Bean Choice, the green label? No. Well. I have a long time ago in the past. A lot of these things I've had that you can't get no more. Yeah, Not that, they, they discontinued it, and a lot of people, were, right. they made a run on it because it had gotten some good reviews online. I never got a chance to try. I think uh, uh, Jay, Jay Terry, I think he got he got a bottle. He got it. Yeah, yeah he, he was bragging about it for a but while. But he there. got it in Kentucky. <laughs> he got it in Kentucky as a leftover on one of their yeah. store in Kentucky. You just don't see it anymore. It's just like Jim Beam's Choice or Jim Beam's. Uh, uh, they used to put out the uh, the the canner bottles all those years. 
He used to drink a lot from that because my dad got him every year. And, of course, dad didn't pay attention too much. And I helped myself quite a bit. But, <laughs> but that's a whole nother ball game we'll not go into. But, I would concur with Kevin Johnson. I think Jim Beam, some of the uh, – with Jack Daniel, Jim Beam, they have huge advertising budgets. Of course. Yeah. I think if you shop around, you can get something equal or superior for the price. If you're really intent on getting the best bang for the buck, I think that other options that there are better options out there than Beam or, or Jack Daniels for those but that main line works. products. That all works until you get to the Knob Creeks. Yeah. The Knob Creek store picks, especially in that 10 to 13, 14 year range. I that almost the bought best bourbon you can I purchase. I almost bought a 15 year Knob Creek yesterday. I'll probably end up picking it up. This week, uh, I could throw a baseball just, and hit you in the head right now for not buying it. I they, yeah, they, they have, they'll have it. I'll, I'll end up buying it. They have a 15 year, it was a store pick, the 15 year Knob Creek. It was like in a brownish, uh, kind of almost like a maroon colored label. Um, it was a 15 year, I think it was 50 bucks. And I, I will buy it. I will buy it. That's a no brainer, John. I, will That's buy it. I didn't buy it the other day. I, I bought. I don't know. I mean, I spent like $150 on beer. I had the big box, you know, like it, it's you one of those the beer back. <laughs> when I go, when I go back, it'll be sitting there. They had, they had a whole row of it. It'll be there. It'll be there. Yeah, sure. I'll get, I'm going to, I'm going to get it, but it was a fit. I've never had a 15 year bourbon before. You will. I guarantee you that's I'm probably sure going to be one of the best, if not the best bourbon you've ever drank. I, I can't uh, say. Stag Junior, Stag Junior. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> oh, Johnny boy, Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. I'll, Johnny. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it, Robert. I will get it. Okay. okay. I would have gotten it the other day, but I guess because of the, I guess because I had already spent so much money, and I was just like, ah, eh, it'll be there for the next time. Well. Okay, now we've got a new comment from Kevin Johnson. Ezra Book Brooks is one hell of a bang for your buck. Okay. Yes and no. If you can get the original seven year, yes, it is. If you have to deal with the Ezra Brooks, the black label, it's all right. I mean, yeah, for the price, it's good, but it's all right. But if you can get the <laughs> Ever Brooks, right. <laughs> no seven hope. year. Seven year I love uh barrel strength here for $38.99. I purchased this in Iowa a couple of years ago. If you can get that, oh boy, that's a whole different ball game. That's, yeah, that's candy in a bottle, buddy. That is awesome shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's good that's cheap, Robert. I don't know how you feel about this, but I thought it was really good. I'm pretty sure I did a review on it way back. I bought like a little 375, but the 750 mil bottles are dirt cheap too. I think maybe $8.99. Um, Zachariah Harris. I thought it was oh, a pretty good bourbon. Yeah. I've, never seen, label. I've never heard of Zachariah Harris. Oh, I've heard you of that one. Zachariah Harris? Can, uh, it's pretty good stuff. Robert, the Whiskey Scouts never had Zachariah hey, Harris. Hey, you got to remember, it's market driven. Every market's okay. different. What you get in Georgia is not what I get in Georgia. I thought Zachariah Harris was a pretty popular, like, cheap whiskey uh, nationwide. I, I've never heard or seen it. Well, <laughs> so here we go. <laughs> Zachariah. Zachary right okay. here. Yeah, it's it's uh it's popular around here. It's pretty cheap. And it's a good, I think it's a just a four year. I think it is a four year bourbon. Um it changes, it changes per state. Even when I go to where Thrash is at, Colorado, I can get some there's a couple of uh, scotches I get up there. I cannot get here. I can't remember which ones they are right now because I'm getting a little intoxicated. <laughs> to be brutally honest, there's a couple that I've bought in Colorado we don't find here in Kansas. And I, I drive across the line to find them. Oh, well, a classic one's a smoke hit, wherever it's at. So, Kevin, if you're 
There's the Zachariah Harris label. Pretty straightforward. Looks a lot like uh, Jack Daniels label, actually. I don't know where it went. But I have a smokehead that we can't get live wire. Smokehead live wire. It's, you can't buy it in Kansas, but if I drive just five miles across the, the, the line over in Colorado, I can get the smokehead high voltage. Or I can't get that in Kansas. It's seventy one dollars and sixteen cents. It's not cheap. Wow. But it's pretty good stuff. Yeah. It's not great, but it's pretty good. Fifty eight point eight fifty. Look at that. Fifty eight percent alcohol by volume. I'll let your minds ponder on that for a minute. <laughs> But anyway, there's it's all market driven. Each market's different because states control what each state gets. And we get stuff I'm sure that maybe even Colorado don't get, but Colorado gets stuff we don't get, Georgia gets stuff yep. we don't get. It's just the nature of it. Especially beer's different than alcohol in that nature. Beer is beer is beer very local because <laughs> Beer is as local as it gets because there's so many craft breweries that they only distribute to the local, you know, like uh, I've got right. five craft breweries within a few miles of here that none of you guys would have even heard of if I hadn't like done reviews yeah. or talked to you about it because nobody else can get it. Just like, Just, um, yeah, Fields and Ivy Brewery, Lawrence, Kansas. You guys are probably never going to see that, but it's good yeah. stuff. I've got a new, uh, New panelist here. Oh, is that, he is that Kevin? He stepped out of picture. Is that Kevin? Oh, put some stuff back up. He's doing that Ronald Sutton. Yeah. They, <laughs> here today, gone tomorrow. Yeah, I'm going to go grab, I guess I'll grab a beer. I'll be right back. Yeah, the Rockies are playing right now. I got them over my on my com other computer over here. Yeah. So. But yeah, if we do another beer uh, baseball, you're welcome, more than welcome. I'd I'd like to have you know because we had a good time just you know chatting about this baseball. Beer. Michael's a great guy too. He really is. He and he knows his stuff about the, the Giants. Oh yeah. He's a little bit older like myself, so his frame of reference goes back to the a little bit further. You know. And stuff. He has a shirt on now. He hey, sure does. Up, yeah. The Giants. Uh, yeah. How you guys doing? How Pretty you doing? Good. Glad, hey, glad for, you can hop on. Uh, thanks for I, having I, me. And glad you uh, you had a, a nice stream of comments. I really enjoyed those. And uh, you're in Northern Virginia, right? Oh uh, yes, sir. I'm about. I'm in uh, uh, North Carolina, so I'm in I'm, the border on the border state. Yeah, I hear that. I'm about 20 miles outside of Washington D.C. So uh, yeah. I'm in the D.C., uh, Maryland, Virginia area, the tri-state. I come to I come to Southwest Virginia a lot because I got a motorcycle. I like the, the uh, twisty roads, the mountain terrain. So, uh, I, and I ride a lot on Blue Ridge Parkway. But I haven't That's been nice. in North Virginia for quite some time. But uh, I well, went you're out not missing one out I, unless you like traffic. So yeah, <laughs> about that. we got like some I good beer. We got I went to Baltimore here, years There's ago. There's actually a lot of distilleries, a lot of wineries. Uh, there's yeah. a lot of uh, breweries out here. Um, we're actually booming when it comes to that. There's there's tons of breweries, wineries, distilleries out here. Um, it's a good place if you like to try new stuff that's local. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I remember going up through North Virginia when I went to Baltimore years ago when the Orioles still played in the old Horseshoe Memorial Stadium. Yeah. And Natty Brew, Natty Bo was everywhere. That was the beer. Mm -hmm. You didn't yeah. really see anything else that time. You know, the local connection was – and I always – I've always had a soft spot for that beer because uh, of, of getting it. Uh, one summer, some of my friends, we went up to see the Yankees playing in the World Stadium. And at that time, they had Monday Night Baseball. And I looked up in the press box, and there was Howard Cosell, Keith Jackson, and I can't remember who the, who the third announcer was, but uh, yeah. that was a great time to well, see them play in the old Natty Bow is a, uh, it's a nostalgic beer. It's for people that are from the area. You know, if you're, uh, yeah. if you're a Baltimore on, as they call it, you know, someone from the area. It's a, it's a cool, it's a cool beer. It's a cool logo, cool company. Um, but it's actually not brewed in Baltimore anymore. No, it's brewed by, and, uh, it. It, yes, it's contract brewed right now. Yeah, and, but I still like it. You know, we can get it. Me I too. Can get it's it a, here it's in my a great area. beer, man. It's a great beer. Uh, if you, 
the prices aren't that great unless you find some uh, area that has a uh, uh, what's it called a total wines. Are you familiar with that's that? That's why I'm getting mine at total wine. Yeah, yeah, they have good prices on beer, but uh, if it's, you find uh, seven ninety nine for twelve it's pack. Mark a little bit. Seven ninety nine for twelve pack here at total. Oh wine. my god! I mean, that's a steal. and my friend uh, John Anile, who's on the panel right now. He came to visit me in the spring of 2019, and uh, he picked up a 12 pack of Natty Bow at the Total Wine mm -hmm. in Winston Salem, along with a few other beers, I, as I recall. <laughs> yeah, I, I really like the Natty Bow. Um, it's one of those, yeah, one of those hidden brands that, yeah. I mean, well, obscure, hard to find brands that uh, it's really unfortunate because I think it would sell well if they if the distribution was halfway decent. I think a lot of people would buy it. Well, it's a tough market, isn't it? Yeah, it's a tough market out there. Yeah, man. well, I think we, we got to compete just against the light, all light all these, and, uh, the light beer market. Is a, tough, a tough market. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Kevin, have you ever tried the Natty Bow uh, Ice? Oh, Natty Bow Ice. No, I, I've I've only heard of it from uh, Ronald Terrio's uh, YouTube same, video. Likewise. Yeah, I've never. I don't really think that was a thing. Maybe a year or two. I don't really think they really uh, pushed that too hard. I don't think that really caught a caught a fire. I think yeah. that was a small promotion that they did, and uh, they were trying to compete with ice beers, and it just failed. That's my guess. Yeah, I don't even know if it's still available. I you know, doubt I it. I highly doubt it. I mean, yeah. even national, even national Bohemianism is 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 smallly. You know, it's not very available. Um, you might get it in the East Coast. You said you're in North Carolina. You get it. But else, uh, how much further south do you think they really get? They go. Yeah, it's mostly like a mid eastern Atlantic coast beer, I think. Yeah. And, hey, William. Alex. Just, Alex just okay. texted me. He says he's in the basement. Please tell William. I, didn't, I don't see him. Okay, I can barely see the top of his forehead. Okay, the way this is set up here, <laughs> I can't. I can't really see. I see his forehead. So. Because uh, he's looking down, chatting with everybody. I'll try. To, I'm, um, I'm touching on his forehead. I may need to decrease the the my screen a little bit. The uh, I'll uh, I'll reduce so, so, the size a little bit. So, gentlemen, I've been lurking uh, for okay, a he's, long time. I, I, his, I can add him now. I never really was uh, going to join. I've been lurking for a long time. How's my audio? How's the video? Is it okay? I'm glad That's you hopped on here. Yeah, I enjoyed, I enjoyed reading your stream of comments yeah. here while we were. Drinking these flavored bottle beverages help me keep my uh, coherency. <laughs> it's nice to put a face with a name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, cool, man. Like it helped me. It's a beautiful day out here. You can see the sunny skies Alex. right here in Virginia. What is up? Beautiful day, hey, buddy. Much, Alex. And we have a we have a, a new panelist here, Eric from the Garden State of New Jersey. Well, guess what? There's two New Jerseys. To New Jersey, right. uh, New Jersey, New the most densely populated state in the union. They're packed like sardines together. <laughs> uh, some might, some well, might say uh, something about an armpit, but I'm not going to uh, fill it. Yeah, fill I, fill I won't blanks. go that. Yeah. I was going to you know, well, I've said this before. Uh, I'm pretty sure that it, it might be in the, you know, like in the in the history books. I'm pretty sure New Jersey is the only state that you can smell from other states. <laughs> um, actually, I, I lost a girlfriend when I lived down in Florida. <laughs> Uh, we were walking down the the, the, the ocean, and uh, some trash washed up. And I said, "Hey, babe, doesn't that remind you of New Jersey?" And uh, <laughs> it kind of that that kind of ended the relationship right there. Rim shot. Wow. But I love That's New Jersey. Tough. I'm just, well, Alex, just a joke. You, I love you guys. Alex lives in the good part of New Jersey. It's okay. We're not making fun. Of, it's just New oh, Jersey. Oh, well, I know. When you go, of, I understand, John, because you go up north near um like new york and stuff before you hit new jersey while you're hitting new jersey once you hit that section that's where it stinks when you keep going straight and keep going you know keep going then eventually you'll get away from that smell i i've never experienced it because i've never been up there <laughs> so. don't don't worry uh alex jersey i knew they used to call Cleveland the armpit of america before they sort of had a renovation downtown so a lot of these um, cities in the Midwest, where there's been a, a sort of a white flight away to the suburbs, you know, they 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 sort of fall in disrepair in the main cities, and some of them have tried to do some renovation. But like with Cleveland, they got their baseball stadium that you know that helped them, and you know Baltimore got Camden Yards, that was a big uh, boost for their local economy. 
I mean, you really can't talk too much smack when you when you live in in the Baltimore area. You know, we got yeah. our own issues. Yeah, it's a. Uh, those who live in uh, glass houses don't sit and throw stones. <laughs> so, uh, I, William, thanks for having me. I'm going to go ahead and drop. I have kind of uh, already thing going on on uh, Sunday. We uh, Lone Star and I get, uh, I get together and watch uh, okay. and shit and have a good old time. And uh, yeah, thanks, man. It's, it was I, I, I hang out here. I got a lot of comments about the Rockies owner. I noticed so uh, there's yeah. some interest in the Colorado Rockies. Yep. Yep. And they're doing well to start the season in the in the uh, NL West. I know yep. they've been a surprise team so far. We'll see what happens. Yeah, it's a, you know, as the Eagles say, who can go to this is well filed out in the long run. So well, it's guess a weird year too, just like Lone Star. It is. Oh, yeah. These guys yeah, are managing like every game is a playoff because yeah. of the shortened season. You can't go with a starting pitcher too long if he's if he's weak. Got it. So it's it's a, it's really sort of like a wild card season in a sense. Yep. All right, man. Yeah. Thank you very Thank much. You on, Ryan. Enjoy. Uh, I might see it a little bit. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Okay. Appreciate you coming out. To meet you. Thanks for joining. But, uh, but yeah, a gentleman, it's, it's, it's really cool to be a part of this panel. I don't like you didn't hear me, but. Pardon? What, Kevin? Uh, it was, it's really cool to be a part of this panel finally. Uh, I really appreciate you guys. You guys are really educated, uh, not only in uh, alcohol, but. Just in general, uh, I really appreciate the respect that you guys have for each other. And it's actually a really nice, uh, you know, uh, a platform for people to have a nice Sunday and enjoy, you know, enjoy each other's company. I'm just saying uh, thank you for allowing me here. Um, I, and I'm having a good day. I appreciate you guys. Well, so you're, you're welcome yeah, anytime. Well, that's, that's what it's always, about. There's a always good, nice there's to a meet good people. And, and, yeah. Always nice talking about beer and sports and hanging out and with everything going on in the world, it's a nice kind of escape from from the the BS that we're dealing with in yeah. in, in the world. You know? hey, hey, Ke hey, Kevin, it's nice to meet you, my friend. My name is Alex, and I've been friends with these guys for a long time. If you want to learn how to pour beers, watch Alex. And if, yeah. and if you're, well, and if hello, you're I've actually fan. seen you. I, I've seen you on a lot of YouTube videos. So uh, I would always appreciate your opinions. And your perspectives. So it's nice to meet you too, sir. Anytime, my friend. Anytime. Cheers to you, brother. Hey, Alex. What's next week's uh, food? Well, fruit? shocking enough, we're going to be having some fruit. What? Fruit. 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 Fruit, fruit Friday. Yep. Yeah. I have to keep that in mind. I have a great, good buddy uh, checking on the background of that, and he knows who he is. And uh, which he already did that background. That was a beautiful background. <laughs> yes, I'll, I'll, yeah. Fridays yeah. are hard for me, Alex. When you come in early, I didn't even make Blake on Friday because I be honest. That's I, okay. You're a busy man. At 7 30, oh, I was out like a light. <laughs> Get or you didn't miss anything on Blake's channel. It was a totally it was a shit show over there. Well, Blake, Blake's yeah, internet I mean, crapped out on him like it was just all <clears throat> Yeah. It was just all like well, what ended up happening was everybody got frustrated with Blake because his internet was dropping in and out. So we all went over to the CBP stream and, and they had the basically we did Friday throw that on craft beer pours. Okay. I was sure. Yeah, Blake couldn't join because his internet. I don't know. He needs to upgrade his internet. He's in Arkansas. He can only do what he can do. Oh, come on. He can rig it up. Some aluminum foil, a good antenna. <laughs> he can figure <laughs> something out. <laughs> he so needs to go Bill and Hillary. Maybe they can help. So, guys, if it's, a, if, if it's not an interruption, I just want to uh, get to know you guys a little bit better. So, if you could just go around and let me know who you are and where you're from, that would be awesome. Uh, I really appreciate that. <clears throat> sure. Uh, yeah. My name is Kevin Johnston. I'm from Northern Virginia, personally. And uh, I've been watching uh, watching your guys' uh, live stream for a while. It's pretty cool. So, I'd just like to know a little bit about everybody, if that's okay. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, well, well, you want to – I don't care. who. Go well, 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 ahead. Uh, Go ahead. We'll start with John, and we'll work around. I'll, I'll go last. All right. Well, yeah. My right. name's John. Uh, I my channel is John George Beer Reviews. John and Ellie. I do beer reviews and Stout Sunday, and just drink beer and hang out with these guys. Um, 
personal life. Like I, I'm, I'm single. I live in a, an apartment by myself. I'm in healthcare. I do physical therapy at home health. And, um, I just love doing this as, as kind of an escape from, from reality. real life. And, and, uh, I mean, this is yeah. real life, but I, I love doing this and hanging out with friends, you know, I have probably more friends on social media now through YouTube that I've met over the last couple of years. It's really, it's a lot of fun. And I've met a lot of these guys in real, I've met William Kepley. I've met oh, wow. Ron Ontario, Louisiana. Beerview. I've met him three times. He's come to visit me twice. I've been down to Louisiana to visit him. Drunken one there in the chat. We hang out a lot. Um, it's just a great community we have here. I love hanging out with these guys, but um but yeah, I live in Noonan, Georgia. I'm about 30 miles south of Atlanta. And I've lived in Georgia for the last six and a half years. I lived in Columbus, Georgia for four years. And I've lived in Noonan for going on two and a half years now. Oh, that's cool, man. So. All right. I'm Robert Hendricks. I'm from Mongolia. No, I'm not from Mongolia. Okay. <laughs> How dare you, sir? How dare you? I'm, to start I'm from Utah, Kansas, a little town in Kansas. And uh, I know John for quite a while and Alex and William. Uh, I don't know. I do mostly, I do exclusively, honestly, on my channel, uh, bourbon and whiskey reviews, whether it be scotch or bourbon. I prefer those two. I do occasional Irish whiskeys as well, but that's just what I do. And that's just who I am. And occasionally you'll catch it. You'll occasionally you'll see beer reviews because I ask them to do beer reviews every now and then. Yeah, I've done one beer review, and that was for Alex. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. that's like me. I did that one food review, the Hungry Howie's food review for Alex, because he was like, "You got to do the Hungry Howie's." But yeah, I yeah. Anyway, that's cool. That's all right. I love Alex. Got a got to got to humor Alex once in a while, don't I? I keep Alex happy. If Alex if, if Alex isn't happy, nobody's happy. Right. <laughs> Three Gs. That's you, Alex. You're about out. All Alex, right. You know, well, me a little bit, but uh, so you you've been, you've been coming to these uh, videos for for a while, right? I've Ooh. been uh, actually I've been I've been going on live streams for the past uh, year or two. I started with uh, Craft Beer Pours. I don't know if you know him. But that's one of my that's one of my other YouTube friends as well. Um, I started with that, and then I came along from that, and I met everybody here. And in the past year, and it's been a, a beautiful moment. I drink beers with these guys. I uh, I do Stout Sundays for John sometimes. I join Stout Sundays sometimes with John. Um, I enjoy it. And I've been living in New Jersey for all my life. That's beautiful. So, yeah. What about, what about the man, the myth, and the legend? Uh, William was <laughs> Capley? Capley? <laughs> uh, I live in uh, Thomasville, North Carolina, which is along Interstate 85. It's the triad <laughs> yeah, region of High Point, Greensboro, Winston-Salem. I'm centrally located in the state, so I'm about equal distance from the Atlantic coast and the uh, mountains in the west. And uh, prior to doing, uh, I got involved with the the beer social media in late 2016 through J J Terrio. Okay, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be doing this because I was not a social media animal at all. Didn't have a Facebook account. Didn't have any real interest in social media. But I like beer. And I like talking about beer. And gotten involved with this. And I've met some very good, very fine people while I've been doing this. Yeah. Uh, and I've. My other interest, I like baseball, I like sports in general, I like classic rock music, and I like motorcycles. And uh, like, a, we, like a couple, two nights ago, Friday night overnight, we did a baseball hangout talking about uh, Major League Baseball. So if, yeah. you, if you like baseball and you like baseball stories and stuff, you're welcome to join any time because baseball is a sport that you never run out of stories. So, you know, well, and uh, – well, boys, I appreciate the uh, the introduction, and I, I I need to know that uh what what scar what 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 brand do I have to have to my back? Um, are you guys gonna scar me? Is this uh? No. What's the initiation? <laughs> There's no one need. No. We're Nothing. we're, we're yeah. This is it. No, this is a you just you just come hang out. We talk about beer, sports, whatever, and we have a good time. There's no. Uh, it's yeah, not a really like cool. a fraternity. Uh, 
Was it somebody was? It might have been you making comments earlier in the yeah, chat I was about just joking. The, yeah, the fraternity. Yeah, there's there's no. no was my brother. My brother was in a rugby rugby fraternity, and they're, they're savages. So you know, I've, I've heard a lot no. of stories. You know, if you know something no. about the beer we're talking about, jump on. Yeah, and, that's, and, really and, cool, guys. that's really cool, man. I'm, I'm grateful to be a part of know, it. Just, just let you know, I, my channel is Alex the Beer Master. If you're not already subscribed, to me, I don't no, I'll, I'll subscribe as soon as I get off this. I'll, I'll gladly do that. So right, everybody's right. having a good Sunday. Uh, I'm I'm personally sipping on a Miller Lite, uh, and, and that's why I asked everybody, you know, what is your 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 little go-to uh, gas station beer? You know, and, and a lot of you guys answered. I appreciate that um, because at the end of the day, sometimes you don't want to drink an IPA. You don't want to drink a stout. Uh, right. Maybe you're just kind of thirsty, and it's a hot day, and you mow the, your lawn, and things are going on, and you might just want to go buy a 12 pack of something, you know, kind of light. So that's why I was curious, um, and a lot of you guys answered. I appreciate the answers. Um, it just, uh, it's kind of fun to hear that. So I appreciate you guys. We'll give you a little bit of initiation here. Okay. Look on the bottom of your Miller Lite can. Look on the bottom of your can. Okay. You see the, you see the code date? Uh, it says October 26, 20. Okay. What does the second line say? It says A3003201. Okay, A means that was brewed on a Monday. <laughs> okay. The 30 would mean your beer comes from the Shenandoah Valley in Virginia. Oh, hell yeah. That's good water. So yours is local. And the last four digits are the uh, canning time, which would be like military time, 24-hour clock. Okay. What's your last four digits on there? 2051. Okay, 20. That would be 1051 p.m. Yeah. Wow. So, so you've been initiated formally now. So you're a member. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, I, we get a lot of beers here where I live and also from that because they closed the brewery they had in North Carolina. There was one in in, uh, El, in uh, North Carolina, Eden, North Carolina, which is only about so, 50 so, miles so, from me. So this Miller Brewery is in is, is in where? I mean, this is... It's uh, in the Shenandoah Valley. I, I think it's called, the little town's called Elkton, I think, or Elkington. Really? Or, I've never seen it a brewery. It is in here. Northern Virginia. Yeah. But we get well, a lot of the all, all the Miller Lights I drink come from that one. So when I see that 30 on the code date, I know that it's coming from Virginia. Huh. That's why this that's why I can't stop drinking this beer today. That's right. So uh man, I that's one was, thing I learned know, I couldn't understand I, why it tastes so good. <laughs> it is. It, <laughs> I thought it was my refrigerator. And, uh, I was like, oh man, this refrigerator is something special. But yeah. uh it must be the uh the, the damn brewery. And that's all, and the fresh to date on those are good. The, thing, the nice thing about Miller Lite is it sells so well that you rarely go ever going to get a stale beer. They they have to rotate the stock because it I've sells never so had well. a stale beer from my Miller Lite. Yeah, you know what I've had a stale beer from actually recently was uh, Keystone Ice. I was actually kind of pissed off. Um, I bought a a, a, a fifteen pack from uh, whole uh, what is it called? Uh, Total Wine. Total Wine, yeah. Yeah, I got a fifteen pack of uh, Keystone Ice, and it was it was about three months out of date. Yes. Oh, wow. Some of these brands that don't move that three well, months out of date, man, that's really that. bad. I, I almost thought about bringing the pack back to the store, but I was like, ah, should I really do that? Should I be that guy? And I just, yeah. I just drank it. I was kind of pissed, you know. And you can tell that it tastes kind of weird, but it's not like yeah. it's going to make you sick. I, I'm taking it back. I don't, I don't feel bad about it because I spend money and I want to get a product that best represents. I know, I know. So you yeah. know, and I've never, I've never been really given any flat for it. The only so way William, things will improve is if people make a deal about it. If you complain, I've, the old I've, I've will get the grease. So I don't know. I, this I was drinking this earlier, the natural ice, and it yeah, tastes good. good tastes good and fresh, but I honestly don't know because there's just a coat on it. There's the first. It's all one line, and but the first set uh, is is one two three. It's five. Numbers two zero one seven zero. I got that. One. I know that one. Okay, that's and then the next, next, that's a that would be the year 2020, 170th day of the year. <clears throat> so that's what brewed. That's, what would be the, that's a Julian code. That's the Julian. Okay, so code. that's not too bad. Okay, no, that's and not, then next to it. That's next less than to two it. Old. A, JD one eight four five. The, the hmm. middle one would be like the production line number, and the last four would be the time, like the military code. 
What's what's the last four? It's two zero one zero, and then it's JD one eight four five. One eight four five would be uh, six forty five p.m. Okay. So yours is so it was brewed, It was canned on the one hundred and seventieth day of this year at Which eight. Would be in June, sometime in June. So yeah, that's lot, pretty fresh. So it, so it is pretty fresh. All right. It's less than two months old, so that's not bad. <clears throat> I never know. I never know with the macro. Like I never know yeah. with, with the gas station. You buy well, a fifteen pack at a gas station. You mm -hmm. never really know what you're getting. That, you know? That's yeah. true. But the thing is, what what I've learned actually about buying <laughs> you know beer specifically like you know ice beer is that. If you have to question the taste, there's a red flag, right? So I questioned the taste, and then I looked at the beer. And I was like, ah, that's off. So it's almost like, you know, if you have to have a question about the date, it's probably something messed up. So that's when I learned that it was about two, three months out of date. And I felt ripped off. I felt cheated, you know. And, and I thought it was lucky. I was at the store, and it was like the last 15-pack of uh, Keystone Ice. I was like, oh, man, I'm the lucky guy. No, man. Yeah. I was the guy yeah, that, usually you know, got the shitty yeah. ass fucking deal you know so it's kind of you know, that's, like, that's like when i was in uh in north georgia uh on my way back from gatlinburg back in march i found a six pack of the old milwaukee ice and right. william i think i told william about this because i got to try it when yeah. when i went up to visit him he he let me you know he, he bought me a can and we we tried it anyway i loved it but i bought the six and i should have known because it was dusty on the bottom shelf in the cooler and it was the last six pack they had, so I should have known right then and there. But I, you know, sometimes you get excited, you just buy it, and then later when I'm drinking, I'm like, this doesn't taste right. So then I, I look at the date, or which it may have yeah. been a code that I had to look up to figure out what it actually was. Anyway, it turns out that it was it was almost six months past the best oh, wow. bite date. No wonder it tastes like shit. Six months out of the like, date. Even this has a code date. Right. Uh, uh, what got left oh, left? Left? This one is fresh. This one is one ninety one twenty. So the hundred ninety first day of the year. So it's bus basically one month old. Is what, that what? empty, William? Pardon? Yeah, that's empty. I was wondering if it's empty. Hey, John, so, everybody, I got some beers to show real quick. Uh oh. Yeah. All right, Alex, go for it. But I, but I'm, you know, Alex, you, you showed a Voodoo Ranger. That I have, yeah. Well, I, 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 I didn't get that. I didn't get this again, so I have to get it again. So we can't do any review. Well, I'll right. get ready to say if you want to do a review on Voodoo Ranger, let me know. Yes, I will let you know because uh, I don't know what Voodoo Ranger you had, but I had this one last uh, night. I got um, that one. Okay, good. So if I get it, I'm going to definitely get this again because it's good, and I have to review it. Because I made a mistake last night. I'll tell you when I get back. Did you figure out what happened, Alex? It wasn't. Did you figure well, it out? I actually figured it out. My camera, supposing my computer updated, I don't know for a fact, but I think my computer updated and not, and it took my camera away. So what I did was I gave, uh, what's his name, my password, or, you know, a special word, a password to get in when, to control the computer. And we got yeah. to my camera and now it's back. On where I had it, um, oh. it, it just—they basically moved it. They basically moved the camera, and I couldn't freaking find it. It was they, they, yeah. It just wasn't showing up on the main screen anymore. It was never gone. It just, yeah. We I got to look it up though. We had to, we had to get into it to look it up though. I mean, I got you. Okay, so you figured you got it working again. That's good. Yeah, guys, I'm going to uh, I'm going to log off here right now. We've uh, yeah. It seems like these the comments have sort of dwindled down, but uh, and we can I, I'll keep it uh, offline for a while. Yeah, yeah, we'll go. Yeah. Yeah. I want to thank everybody. I thank everybody for joining the panelists. The live part like an hour ago. <laughs> yeah, uh, but we're still getting comments, so I kept it. That's the reason I kept oh, it. Yeah. Oh yeah, all the people still commenting, but that's that's sort of abated now. So uh, we want to thank everybody for the panelists that participated. We had a healthy healthy live chat going the whole time I, I i just basically was busy keeping up with that so uh and anyway like i said if you got flavor malt beverages it's going to be fun it's fun right. in the can so I, I enjoyed this and uh, so uh until next time bottoms up and don't spill a drop hold on guys hold on i'm showing what I, I was showing my my beer for you we'll do it all there alex 
Well, we're still going to 